Hello friends. Welcome to Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto was the son of Goku and Kai Kai. Also be sure to subscribe and like this video. Now let's begin. In a small house somewhere deep in the forest. Look Goku, doesn't he look beautiful? Exclaimed Kai Kai. He definitely has your looks, and those eyes of his look like yours as well, said Goku. It was true. The object of affection both parents were talking about was their recently born son. The little boy had a combination of Goku and Kai Kai's looks, but had Goku's hair and black for his eye color. There was something special however, their son had a brown tail. Goku looked at his son and soon thought of the many great adventures that they would experience together, as father and son. What should we name him? Asked Kai Kai. Goku was in the middle of thinking of a name when he suddenly felt a rumble in his stomach. I'm hungry, complained Goku. Kai Kai bonked Goku on the head while she carefully held her newborn son. Now is not the time to worry about eating Goku. Yelled Kai Kai. But I'm really hungry, insisted Goku. Kai Kai gave a sigh of aspiration as she thought about what Goku said. You can eat after you have thought of a name for our son, said Kai Kai. Okay, was Goku's response. Even though he was supposed to be thinking of a name, Goku slowly wandered off to the wonders of food. Mm chicken. Nah that's too bland. Fish. No had that yesterday. Raymond. Actually Raymond doesn't sound too bad, but what toppings should I put? How about Naruto? Thought Goku. Suddenly Goku muttered the name Naruto out, and Kai Kai contemplated the name. Well it's not the worst name in the world, said Kai Kai. However, Kai Kai wanted a more sophisticated name for their son. How about Alfred? She asked. Suddenly their son began to cry as if he already disliked the name. Kai Kai gently cooed the baby to calm him down, and Goku once again said the name Naruto loud. Their son began to giggle and laugh at the name. This response shocked Kai Kai, so she decided to test the names out. She said Alfred and their son cried while he laughed at the name of Naruto. Well, I guess we have a name now don't we? Said Kai Kai. She pondered about the name and realized it also meant Maelstrom which she thought was fitting, given the fact that their son would surely be a force to be reckoned with. Well then welcome to the world my little Naruto, said Kai Kai, while Goku leaned over and smiled at his son. They both knew that this was the start of a big adventure. Eight years later. Naruto was raised to be sophisticated by his mother while he still loved adventure, a trait he got from his father. Naruto never gave up on whatever he set his mind to, something his parents loved about him. His never give up attitude brought smiles on anyone he met. He was just so positive, it was like he was a little ball of sunshine. Naruto was just getting out of bed when he heard his parents discussing something in the living room. No I will not let you take Naruto out of the house and train, he should be studying and getting an education like other kids his age. Exclaimed Kai Kai. But Kai Kai Goku said, he has great potential, I bet he will even surpass me one day. Countered Goku. I said no and that is final. Pronounced Kai Kai. What if I let you still educate him, but I also get to train him? Please. 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 Whined Goku. Not all right fine, said Kai Kai, but you better make sure that Naruto doesn't get hurt in a training accident or anything of the sort, you got that Goku. Goku, who was just happy that Kai Kai agreed so easily, just shook his head yes repeatedly. Naruto by this point had heard everything and was ecstatic. This was going to be his first time training with his father. Lost in his thoughts, Naruto accidentally opened his door completely and went wide-eyed. However, as luck would have it, his parents didn't notice his expression, especially Goku. Goku ran over, scooped Naruto up, and kept cheering on how he was going to train him. Naruto and Goku smiled in content, and they both laughed as Goku spun Naruto around in circles. Kai Kai looked on at the scene in content, and the family was just happy to have this happy moment. Little did they know that a new evil was soon approaching. Five years later. As the years went on, so did the bond between the small family of four. That's right, four. Kai Kai gave birth to another beautiful boy that was named Gohin, after Goku's adoptive grandfather. Gohin soon looked up to his big brother Naruto and his father Goku. Now don't get him wrong, he loved his mother. He just looked up to his brother and father because they both had inspired Gohin in his life. Naruto was now 13 years old, while Gohin was 5. Gohin and Naruto both had monkey-like tails. Naruto's attire consisted of a black guy. He wore an undershirt that was colored blue and black boots. He also had black guy pants and had his tail wrapped around his waist. Naruto's guy had the kanji that represented the number 4, Yan, on the back of his black guy. The kanji was lettered in black and was surrounded in a white circle. He did this to symbolize the four star ball that was once his great grandfather's which was passed on to his father. Gohin wore a green shirt with a yellow coat over it. He also had a hat that had a four star dragon ball on it. He had his tail flying and moving around. 
Naruto and Goku are both standing 20 yards away from each other in a grass plain. Both were tensed as they were waiting for the other person to move. Gohan was also there, but he was only watching, as he had gotten off early from his studies that his mother had made him do earlier today. Gohan watched in anticipation as he stared between his brother and father. The leaf soon flew to the ground, and both father and son were off. A barrage of punches and kicks were exchanged that Gohan couldn't keep up with. The speed they were going at could nearly break the sound barrier. Goku ducked under Naruto's punch, but Naruto anticipated this and maneuvered himself to kick Goku's back. Yet, Goku's reflexives kicked in, and he was able to jump over the attempted kick and prepared to punch Naruto in the face. As Goku zoomed in on Naruto, Naruto realized he didn't have time to counter or dodge, so he decided to block. The punch sent Naruto skidding throughout the area. Wow dad, that's a powerful punch, said Naruto, but I guess I better take this seriously now. Naruto flew forward, and it soon appeared as if he had vanished into thin air because of the speed he was going at. This caught Goku off guard which he soon regretted as Naruto had punched him in the chest and kicked up towards his face in one quick motion. Goku retaliated and soon the father and son duo went at it again. As time went on and both took the spar seriously, the fighting moves became more and more complex. Eventually, Naruto won the spar by doing a spin kick and hitting Goku in the jaw. This move had made Goku fly towards the mountains, and he crashed through two of them. Goku stopped moving and smiled. Alright you win, good job son. It wasn't easy dad, if it wasn't for the training that I've received from you, I wouldn't have won. So while I may have won, it was all thanks to you dad. Said Naruto. Naruto walked over to his father and helped him up with one shoulder over him. Mom is going to kill us, said Naruto. Probably, replied Goku with a grin. Naruto deadpanned at the nonchalant answer. Gohan ran up to Naruto and Goku and said, Daddy you were awesome. Big bro, you were incredible. You and dad were like pow and bang and boom and kept on saying Gohan. Goku laughed at his son's response and ruffled his hair. Gohan blushed in embarrassment. Naruto also laughed at his brother's own description about their spar. He picked up Gohan and put him on his back as he carried both Goku and Gohan to their house. Is that food? Yelled Goku as he barged into the house. Save some for us dad. Said Gohan and Naruto as they were trailing behind. This should be enough for everyone said Kai Kai. Kai Kai served bowl after bowl to her family of Saiyans. Don't eat too fast. Blow on your food if it's hot. Don't talk with your mouth full. Is what you could hear Kai Kai say as her family ate. Goku, Kai Kai said, are you going to introduce Naruto and Gohan to your friends tomorrow? Maybe, I thought you would be against this kind of thing, aren't you? Asked Goku. Normally yes, I would be against this. Said Kai Kai, but our kids need to be more social with other people, it isn't healthy to keep them cooped up in here all day. Okay, I'll take them to meet Rashi and everybody else tomorrow, said Goku as he was shoving more food in his mouth. Thus be careful, I want our kids safe and sound when they return, got it Goku. Kai Kai said seriously. Yeah, they'll be fine. What could go wrong tomorrow? We're just going to visit some friends, we'll be okay. Said Goku. That's what I'm worried about, what could go wrong, thought Kai Kai. Well if you say they'll be fine, I'll trust you, just be careful, worried Kai Kai. Soon the family went back to talking, chewing loudly, and having empty food bowls stacking up. Before the day was over, Kai Kai noticed something. Goku, why does Naruto have bruises? Said Kai Kai in a threatening manner. Well um, you see us stammered Goku. Run dad. Yelled both Naruto and Gohan. Oh no you don't, come back here and take your beating like a man. Yelled Kai Kai as she chased Goku around the house with a frying pan in hand. Yep life was looking great for the Sun family. The next day. The peaceful calm day was starting on earth. The sun was out, birds were chirping, and it seemed as if today was be a beautiful day. However, this scene was soon ruined by a rushing cloud flying in the air. Goku had both Gohan and Naruto on the flying Nimbus. Gohan was being held on Goku's shoulder and was giggling as they rode. Naruto was just sitting down and relaxing as the air passed right by him. The Sun family soon arrived at a small looking house on a small beach, as if the person who owned it wanted to be secluded. The family jumped off the Nimbus and began walking towards the door of the house. Meanwhile. Three people were sitting around a table and playing cards. These three people were Bulma, Krillin, and Master Rashi. Bulma was Goku's childhood friend, had blue shade of hair, and was wearing a blue shirt with a white coat over it. Krillin also Goku's childhood friend, was bald, and had a smaller version of Goku's guy on. Lastly there was Master Rashi. Rashi trained Goku as a child, had a green shirt, yellow shorts, and had a bit of a perverted nature. These three friends were playing cards when both Krillin and Rashi sensed some high power levels coming their way. It also seemed that whoever was coming their way was coming in fast. Oh no. Said Krillin, those power levels are heading our way, could it be Piccolo? Asked Krillin. 
I doubt Piccolo would come here without a reason, no I believe it's someone else, replied Rashi. Well whoever it is, I'm not staying around to find out. Later guys. Said Bulma as she was running out of the house, ready to use the capsule that would have brought out a hovercraft. Hey guys. Shouted Goku to his friends. Bulma turned to look at who it was while Krillin and Rashi came out of the house. Goku landed off of the flying Nimbus along with his two sons. Goku, is that really you? Asked Rashi. Of course, who else would it be? Replied Goku with a smile. Wow Goku, you look taller since the last time I've seen you, said Bulma. Yep, I've been training hard and it's sure paying off, said Goku with a smile. I didn't take you for one to babysit Goku, said Krillin as he was looking at Naruto and Gohan. Well actually, they're my son said Goku. Everyone had a shocked expression on their face as they realized that Goku was a father. Go on, introduce yourselves Naruto, Gohan, said Goku as he gently pushed his sons forward. Gohan walked up in front of his father and said, Hello my name is Gohan, I love my family, and I'm going to be a psychologist when I grow up. Ah I see, you named him after your grandfather did you? Well I'm sure he would be proud of you Goku, said Rashi. The turtle looked at Gohan, while well, Gohan shyly turned his head into his father's leg. Naruto walked up and said, hello everybody my name is Naruto. I love my family, training, and getting stronger. I hope to surpass my dad one day and become a martial arts master. This had made Goku proud of Naruto. Don't get him wrong, he's also proud of Gohan, and he was already proud of Naruto. He just couldn't help but feel a sense of pride for his son when he speaks about the martial arts and getting stronger. The group of friends talked and chatted with each other. Naruto and Gohan met the turtle and Oolong, a pig. It seemed as if everything was going alright. However, little did they know that a new evil was approaching. In the grass plains, many miles away. The farmer was regularly watching his livestock when he heard a loud explosion in the grass plains. He decided to check it out so he hopped in his blue truck and drove to the crash site. A spaceship had landed. This spaceship looked more like a pod as it was circular in shape and had a window with a reddish tint. The pod itself was colored white. The front of the ship had a door that cracked open and a human-like male appeared out of the ship. What is that thing, a human? But it can't be, he has a tail. Exclaimed the farmer. This alien appeared to have a human-like features, except for the fact he had a tail swaying behind him. He also had on black and brown armor with boots and a green device on his eye. So this is the planet my foolish brother couldn't eradicate. How disgusting, there is still life on this planet, said the unknown alien. Stay back, or I'll shoot. I mean it, stay back. Said the farmer with his rifle pointed at this alien. This uncount alien floated up from the crater his ship had caused and slowly walked towards the farmer. Their power level is only five, how pathetic, said the alien as he kept advancing towards the farmer. I warned you. Yelled the farmer as he shot his rifle towards the alien. However, despite his shot being fast, this unknown person was faster and quickly grabbed the bullet between his fingers. Is this the best you can offer? You truly deserve to perish, said the unknown person. The alien flicked the bullet back towards the farmer which struck him and put him into an unconscious state. I'm coming for you Kakarot, no Saiyan can fail their mission, and you are no exception, said the unknown person as he quickly flew towards the biggest power level he could find. On a mountain among rock formations. A green-skinned alien was looking out over the land as the wind whistled by him. This person was wearing a white turban, brown boots, blue pants, blue shirt and a white cape. This person was Piccolo, Goku's enemy and rival. Impossible, a power like that shouldn't exist. Said Piccolo as he turned his head in a certain direction. Is it Goku? No it couldn't be, that power is too evil. Well, I thought you were Kakarot, considering you were the highest power level my scouter could find. Said the alien. At lost, I don't want to waste my time on an insignificant bug like you said Piccolo, but he was shaking on the inside. Oh, I don't think I want to get lost. In fact, I feel like starting a fight, said the alien with a sinister smirk. Piccolo, in his enraged state, shot a Kai blast directly at this person. Sadly, the results were not what he expected. Congratulations, you managed to singe some of my leg hair. However, let me show you a true attack, I call it, Double Sunday. Said the alien. Piccolo was in complete shock as he realized his attack had little to no effect on this monster. Yet, before the alien could retaliate, his scouter started beeping and picking up another signal. Looks like it's your lucky day, I found who I was looking for, said the alien as he floated in the air and took off. Damn it. That guy could have easily killed me. Wait, that's in the direction of Goku. I better see how this plays out, thought Piccolo as he silently followed the alien through the air. With Goku and friends. Everyone was having a great time at the Kame house, when suddenly, a big power level was sensed by everyone except Bulma. Someone's coming, go inside the house everyone, said Goku in a rare, serious voice. 
Everyone nodded, but before a singe step could be taken, a figure floated in front of the group of friends. Well, it seems I've finally foundered you Kakarot, said the alien as he looked at Goku. My name is Goku, not Kakarot, said Goku defiantly. Do you really not recognize me Kakarot? I'm your brother, Raditz, said the person known as Raditz with a cocky smirk. The group of friends were shocked to find out that Goku had a brother. What happened to your tail Kakarot? Don't tell me you lost it. You're a bigger disappointment than I thought, said Raditz angrily. I lost my tail as a child, but I don't care. By the way, my name is Goku, not Kakarot. Said Goku. Really Kakarot? You've fallen so low that you don't remember your own name? Yelled Raditz angrily. Do you at least remember you mission Kakarot? Asked Raditz. What mission? Replied Goku. So you've even forgotten your purpose for coming here? First you you forget your name, now you forget your purpose for coming here, Damn it, Kakarot do you really not remember anything? Yelled Raditz as he was progressively getting angrier. What mission? What name? All of this is confusing. Said Goku. Let me humor you, said Raditz. We are a race of warriors Kakarot. We are called Saiyans and transform into our Azeru, grade 8, form when we see a full moon. That's why I'm disappointed that you have lost your tail. You were sent here as a baby to eradicate all life on this planet Kakarot, but it seems like you've failed in that regard, said Raditz. None of that makes sense. Said Goku, thoroughly confused. Actually Goku, when Gohan found you, you were very dangerous. Said Rashi. What do you mean Master Rashi? Asked Goku confusingly. Well, at first, you wanted to destroy everything. You were ruthless and didn't want to sit still for anything. However, that changed on one fateful day. Explained Rashi. Gohan was taking a trip one day with you on his back. However, you accidentally slipped out of your makeshift seat and fell down to the ground. You hit your head pretty hard and Gohan was worried for you Goku, said Rashi. Yet, this fall would be a blessing in disguise. You became this wonderful and caring person that you are now Goku. I'm proud to have taught you said Rashi with pride. Hmm, so that explains it. You hit your head and it must have changed your personality, said Raditz. Everyone was in shock and slowly digesting what they've just heard. Well, you may have lost your value Kakarot, but it seems that it wasn't a total waste coming here, said Raditz as he eyed Naruto and Gohan. Goku instantly went in front of his sons and said, stay away from them, they have nothing to do with our situation. Oh, but you see Kakarot, they have everything to do with this. Our race has dwindled since a meteor hit our planet, so we could use as many Saiyans as we can get, said Raditz with a sick smirk. Naruto, Gohan, get inside the house and stay there, I'll deal with this said Goku, while not taking his eyes off of Raditz. Okay, let's go Gohan you heard father, said Naruto. Be careful daddy, I don't want you to get hurt, said Gohan as he then followed Naruto into the came house. Father huh? Well I guess as uncle I should introduce myself to my nephews, don't you think so Kakarot? said Raditz turning to Naruto and Gohan. Goku didn't want to see his children in harm's way so he rushed towards Raditz and they quickly exchanged blows. How about we take this somewhere else? said Goku seriously. Yes, let's take this somewhere else, shall we? said Raditz in return. Both Goku and Raditz flew off towards the grass plains. Unbeknownst to everyone there, Piccolo was watching the whole exchanged and decided to follow the two Saiyans towards their destination. Everyone, I'm going to back up my father. I don't doubt he could handle Raditz, but it's better if I back him up, said Naruto seriously. Everyone nodded. I'll bring everyone by taking a plane over there, said Bulma. Okay, but make sure everyone is far enough so we don't accidentally hurt one of you, said Naruto. Be careful big bro, and make sure daddy is okay too, said Gohan, worried. Don't worry squirt, we'll be fine. After all, if we weren't okay, mom would be the one killing us, said Naruto. Both Naruto and Gohan shivered as they thought of angry Kai Kai. Well I'm off, later guys, said Naruto as he also joined the fight. The group of friends got ready to see this fight and decided to pick up Kai Kai on the way there. Soon, the battle between the brothers of the Saiyan race would occur. In the grass plains. Goku and Raditz were exchanging blows, with neither letting their guard down. Raditz came in for a punch to Goku's face, but Goku ducked and prepared to kick Raditz in the chest. Raditz crossed his arms and absorbed the impact of the kick, which sent him skidding a few yards. Well Kakarot, it seems I misjudged you, you do have some value to the Saiyan race. How about I give you a second chance to rejoin us and help us conquer the galaxy? Said Raditz with a smile. No, I won't join you or the Saiyan race. So far, it seems as if you are ruthless and cruel. You are no brother of mine, said Goku with conviction. This comment hit Raditz harder than he thought, and he soon saw Red. Raditz took off towards Goku and landed a quick jab in his ribs, which was followed up by uppercut. Goku was then sent into a mountain and was slowly getting back up. 
This quick exchange happened because Goku let his guard down while he was talking to Raditz. You see Kakarot I'm the superior Saiyan said Raditz with a cocky smirk. No, you're just a lowlife that uses cheap shots to win a fight, replied Goku with a rare angry expression. This seemed to angry Raditz as he quickly charged Goku. However, Goku didn't let his guard down this time. Raditz was surprised that Goku was able to keep up with him, which just seemed to anger him even more. Raditz quickly jumped backwards due to his instincts. This was fortunate for Raditz as a kick was smashed through the ground he occupied earlier. Piccolo, I'm surprised you're here, said Goku with a smile. I'm only here because I want to eliminate this guy, don't think I'm here to help you. I'm here for my own goals. Nothing more, nothing less. Said Piccolo. Thanks for coming to help me anyways Piccolo. Piccolo sweat dropped as Goku clearly didn't pay attention to what he had said. Raditz was getting annoyed that he was being ignored, so he decided to attack Goku. Raditz rushed towards Goku and attempted to punch him in the chest. Unsurprisingly, Goku was too caught up in his conversation that his guard was down, which Raditz took advantage of again. Yet before Raditz could dodge, he was kicked in the head and crashed into a mountain. Goku and Piccolo both turned their heads to see Naruto hovering in the air as he had just kicked Raditz. Naruto then landed on the ground. Hmm, so you're Goku's son said Piccolo with calculating eyes. Yeah, my name's Naruto, what's your name? Naruto said with a smile. Piccolo, my name's Piccolo. Well Piccolo, I hope we can get along together, said Naruto with a smile. However, before the conversation could continue, a large explosion occurred and Raditz was seen with a very angry facial expression. I have been humiliated enough. First being ignored, now having been injured by a kid, my nephew no less said Raditz angrily, I have had enough. Now watch Kakarot as I will eliminate you, your friends and family. Then this world will be eliminated as well. Yelled Raditz. Raditz then started yelling as he powered up. Soon, he reached his maximum amount of power. Behold Kakarot, this is the power of a true Saiyan. My power level is now 1500, said Raditz with a cocky smirk. Incredible, this guy's power just skyrocketed. Said Goku in amazement. Raditz then charged Naruto, Piccolo, and Goku. Everybody prepared themselves for a long battle. But Gohan and the others. Alright guys, let's get going said Bulma, we need to pick up Kai Kai and see how the fight with the Saiyan is going. That's great and all, but who's going to tell Kai Kai that her 13 year old son is fighting an alien? Exclaimed Krillin, scared of what Kai Kai could do when she's angry. I'll tell my mom, said Gohan, I should be able to make it easier for her to understand if I explain it to her. Besides, I'm her son so she wouldn't react as violently as she would if one of you guys told her. Thought you know for a five-year-old, you're pretty smart, said Krillin. I get that a lot, said Gohan. Okay then, let's move it guys, said Bulma as she threw down a capsule which contained an airship. Everyone loaded onto the ship and they soon took off. Bulma piloted the airship and flew towards the Sun family house. The house soon came into range and they decided it was time to get Kai Kai. Alright Gohan, go get your mother and explain everything to her, said Bulma. Gohan nodded and got out of the airship. Everyone watched with anticipation as Gohan walked into his house to explain everything to his mother. Everything seemed fine at first with there being silence for the first few minutes, and it was as if everything was going to be okay. Sadly, that was not the case. Suddenly, a loud yell was heard that made everyone wince. Even though they were in an airship, they still heard Kai Kai yell. They soon saw a fuming Kai Kai come out of her house and look around with an angry expression. Kai Kai's eyes then landed on the airship and instantly rushed towards it. Gohan was running after her and followed her into the airship. What do you mean Naruto's fighting a evil alien? Yelled Kai Kai. Everybody paled and started to nervously sweat while Kai Kai glared daggers at them. Wait calm down mom. They're doing fine, I swear. Plus dad is with him so you don't need to worry, said Gohan in an attempt to ease his mother's worries. Oh when I get my hands on Goku. I should have never let him train Naruto. That's it, when they come back, Goku is going to get a job, and Naruto will have his studies increased, said Kai Kai. Wait mom, hear me out. Pleaded Gohan. Kai Kai's eyes softened at the sight of Gohan pleading to reason with her. Kai Kai let out a sigh. Fine, said Kai Kai with a motherly smile towards Gohan. Tell me what you want to say. Thanks mom but listen to me please. Dad and Big Bro are fighting a alien, and while that sounds bad, they've been training hard. Dad also protected me and Big Bro from the alien who is apparently called Raditz. So Dad did protect me and Big Bro did too, it's just that Big Bro wanted to join in on the fight with Dad so he did. So while well, they are both fighting this Raditz guy, Dad did protect us mom, said Gohan. Kai Kai was honestly surprised and touched. Surprised that her son would join a fight against an alien, but touched that Goku protected their kids, something she thought a father should do. She also found Gohan saying Big Bro over and over again kinda cute. 
Ai Kai looked towards the rest of the people on board the airship and asked if what Gohin said was true. Not that she didn't believe him but just wanted confirmation. Everybody nodded at her confirming Gohin's words. Kai Kai then scooped Gohin into her arms and began hugging him as well as smothering him. At least you're not hurt and Naruto better not be hurt either, Kai Kai said as she kept smothering Gohin. Mom? Whined Gohin with a blush of embarrassment. Well, we better get going. We need to get to that battle now, said Kai Kai. Alright, everyone hang on, said Bulma as the airship zoomed off into the sky. At the battle. Impressive Kakarot, you're able to match me at full power, said Raditz however, you still have one weakness. Oh yeah. Then what's my weakness? Asked Goku. It's quite simply Kakarot. Your weakness. Is your own son. Exclaimed Raditz as he rushed towards Naruto at full speed. This surprised Goku, and he prepared to intervene before Raditz could hurt his son, but was then shocked by what happened. Naruto had met Raditz halfway and kicked him right in the chest. This caused Raditz to lose his air and get sent into a mountain. Dad, I think it's time we release our full power said Naruto with a grin towards his father. Yeah, I think you're right son, let's show him our full power. Goku then powered up along with his son to reach their maximum power level. Both were yelling as their power was increasing until it suddenly stopped. Raditz was dragging himself out of the mountain when his scouter started beeping rapidly. He soon realized that his scouter was reading the power level of Kakarot and his son. The power level shocked Raditz. Impossible, power levels of 1700 and 1900. This can't be happening, my scouter has to be malfunctioning said Raditz as he grit his teeth in anger. Prepare yourself Raditz, cause we're coming, said Naruto as he and Goku both rushed towards Raditz. I don't care how many of you come at me. I'll deal with you all, then the rest of the planet will feel my wrath, said Raditz, as he also rushed towards the father and son duo. However, nobody noticed the surprised look on Piccolo's face as he realized that they were in a league of their own. He was angered by the fact that a kid was stronger than him. The incredible idea then struck him, and he then prepared to put it into action. One thing was for sure however, he was going to train vigorously after this battle. Raditz aimed a kick at Goku, but he just ducked and sent a quick jab towards Raditz's abdomen. Raditz quickly dodged but was then faced quick roundhouse kick by Goku towards Raditz's face. Raditz brought his arm up to block. This is when Naruto appeared behind Raditz in a quick burst of speed. Naruto sent a punch towards the back of Raditz's head, but Raditz leaned his head to the left. However, this is what Naruto wanted because he then used his elbow and smashed it into Raditz's jaw. Naruto wasn't done however, and shoved a knee into Raditz's back which sent spit flying out of his mouth. The kick also sent Raditz flying through the air. Naruto appeared bang Raditz again as he was flying and kicked him up into the air. Naruto then used a move that his father had shown him during their training, which also included Kai Blasts, sensing power levels, and suppressing his own power level. The iconic Kamehameha. Naruto charged up Kai in his hands. He cupped his hands close to his body and chanted his attack. Ha! Me! Ha! Me! Ha! Yelled Naruto as he released the Kai attack from his hands. A blue beam shot up at Raditz and quickly engulfed him within the energy. The loud explosion occurred once the attack had come into contact with Raditz. Naruto slowly stood back up and floated back down to the ground. His father soon showed up. I saw that combo and to be honest, that was impressive Naruto. Especially since you're still a kid. Makes me really proud of you son. Said Goku as he ruffled Naruto's hair. Naruto blushed at the praise from his father. He would always want to make his father proud and this seemed to work. Thanks dad, but I might have went a little overboard with the Kamehameha, replied Naruto sheepishly. Hmm. Probably, but it's alright. We both can't sense Raditz's energy so we know you didn't kill him. I am impressed though with the hard work you've put into mastering the Kamehameha. You really are my son, said Goku as he would always work hard as a kid and this reminded him of himself when he was younger. This made Naruto feel happy and joyful. Naruto's never give up attitude really helped him in training and it was showing off now. It was this attitude combined with the fact that he soaked up new moves like a sponge that caused him to master the Kamehameha rather quickly. Raditz was then seen as soon as the smoke cleared, and he was mad. His armor was torn off and scratched in some places, while his scouter survived with some small scratches on the green glass. In short, he looked worse for wear. That's it. I've had enough of this. Prepare yourself Kakarot because I will kill all that you love. Ahhhh. Yelled Raditz as he began to charge up Kai. Naruto and Goku both readied themselves for what Raditz was preparing. Raditz was slightly hunched over with his hands balled into fists. He was floating in the sky with a furious expression on his face as he powered up for his last attack. Raditz then raised both of his arms into the sky and sent all of his charged up Kai into his final attack. Ahahaha. 
watch Kakarot as I will kill your son, and then I will kill you Kaka a bean was suddenly pierced through Raditz's chest. Raditz coughed up blood and turned around only to see Piccolo with a smug smirk. This me? Said Piccolo smugly. Raditz then fell to the ground as he bled out. Naruto and Goku were both surprised. Seems like this guy could use a wish from the Dragon Balls, said Piccolo with a sinister smirk. Naruto and Goku were not against killing, but they only killed when absolutely necessary. When they saw Piccolo kill Raditz it surprised them but did not shock them. Dragon Balls? Asked Naruto. Oh yeah, I never told you. Well Dragon Balls are these magical balls that summon the Dragon Shenron, and there are seven in total. You get one wish of any kind, and then the Dragon Balls disappear unless you collect all seven again. They look like balls with stars in them, like the one on Gohin's hat, said Goku. Naruto nodded as he took in all this information and decided he might use the Dragon Balls later on if there was ever emergency. Suddenly, they heard Raditz mutter his last words. You may have beaten me. But there. There will be more. Saiyans who will be coming. Saiyans who are stronger than me. To collect these Dragon Balls. They have heard your conversation through my scouter. And I will soon be revived. Raditz then died and appeared in the other world. Piccolo, Naruto, and Goku were stunned that more Saiyans would be coming, and they would be stronger than Raditz. However, a bigger problem arised. Where's Goku? Yelled Kai Kai. Both Naruto and Goku turned pale at the voice. Things would be hard to explain, especially to an angry Kai Kai. On the airship heading towards the lookout. Now Kai Kai was a powerful woman. She had to be when being with Goku. However, while she may have not been training as hard as before because she settled down and had a family, she was still a woman. The woman you wouldn't want to mess with. Yet, she was just a concerned mother at the moment. Mom, I can't breathe. Said Naruto as his face began to turn blue. Kai Kai released her son as Naruto took deep breaths of air. I'm fine mom, trust me. The guy we fraught is taken care of so you don't need to worry said Naruto. Yeah we're fine Kai Kai said Goku with a smile. Kai Kai glared at Goku and started demanding to know what happened during the fight with the Saiyan. Well we kinda got into a fight with a guy named Raditz, but we were able to defeat him, Goku smiled nervously. Was Naruto hurt? Kai Kai asked threateningly. Nah he was fine, he even landed a combo that looked awesome, Goku said with a proud smile. Well at least he's not hurt. Kai Kai then started smothering Naruto to the point he started flailing his arms around. Everyone laughed at the comically scene before them, and for a second everyone forgot about the evil Saiyans coming to their planet. Who took him out? Was it you Goku? Or was it Naruto? asked Krillin. This got everyone's attention as they also wanted to know what happened to Raditz. Well long story short, Raditz was powering up and didn't notice Piccolo sneaking up behind him. To be honest, I don't think me and Naruto noticed him either. Naruto nodded to prove his father's point. So with Raditz distracted, Piccolo just used a move that shot out a beam of Kai and it went straight through Raditz, Goku finished. Everybody slightly cringed at the thought of being pierced by a Kai beam. Well at least you didn't get hurt, Naruto Kai Kai said as she cuddled her son. What about me? I could have been hurt too. Exclaimed Goku. Kai Kai instantly sent Goku a glare that promised pain if he kept on talking. Wisely, Goku took the hint and started saying he was just kidding. It was funny watching a man who could destroy mountains and launch Kai beams that can cause major destruction be controlled by his wife. Also, our conversation about the Dragon Balls was recorded by this device on the guy's eye. It's called a scouter if I remember correctly. Apparently his buddies overheard it and decided to come to Earth for the Dragon Balls. They're definitely stronger than this Raditz guy, so we'll have to train, said Naruto. By the way guys, Bulma cut and you said you wanted to go to the lookout. Yeah, it's this way, pointed Goku in a specific direction. Got it, Bulma replied, and the group of friends went silent as they enjoyed the ride. Line break. The hovercraft slowly approached a large flat platform. There were trees, long posts, and a building in the center of the platform. This was the lookout. The hovercraft landed and everyone started walking out. So what happened to Piccolo? We didn't see him when we landed. Said Krillin. He heard you guys and quickly flew off. Said Naruto. Wait, Piccolo was with you? Asked irate Kai Kai. Before Naruto could respond a figure slowly approached them. Everybody took a good look at this new person. He had a dark complexion, black eyes, and red lips. His attire consisted of an open red vest with a golden outline. He had on a white turban with a blue jewel resting on his forehead. There was a single earring in each ear and gold armbands on his arms. He also had on a red sash with white pants and a pair of red slippers with white soles. The figure walked up to the group of friends and began to talk. Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Popo and welcome to the lookout. Three other figures appeared besides Mr. Popo and introduced themselves as Tian, Yamcha, and Shiatsu. Tian was muscular and was shirtless. 
He had green pants on with a red belt. He was bald with black eyes. He had boots on that were yellow and black. His wristbands were green but outlined with red. He had a scar across his right pectoral and eye on his forehead. Yamcha had one scar in the shape of an X across the left side of his face. Another scar ran across his right eye. He had black eyes and black shaggy hair that went to his shoulders. He had blue wristbands on along with an orange guy. His guy was wrapped by a blue belt and he had blue boots on. He had the kanji for came on his guy. Yazu had pale white skin and he had black eyes. He had a black hat on with a red ball on top of it. He was short in height and had red circles on his cheeks. He wore black boots along with a robe colored green and yellow. There was a kanji outlined in red in the middle of his robe. Hello Mr. Popo, Tian, Yamcha, and Shiatsu. My name is Naruto, and this is my brother Gohan and my mother Kai Kai, said Naruto as he introduced his family. Yes, it seems Goku now has a family. Quite interesting as I can still remember when you were a child Goku, said Mr. Popo with a fond smile. Goku just grinned and scratched his head sheepishly. Well it seems everyone else has introduced themselves. Said a figure that was slowly walking towards them. Naruto was about to take a defensive stance, but he noticed nobody else did. He also realized that the person walking towards had no real malice in their voice. Hello everyone, my name is Kami. Said a person who had a similar body to that of Piccolo. He had on a blue cape and shoes along with a white robe. He wore the kanji that means God on the front of his robe in red. Kami started walking towards Naruto. Kai Kai was about to pull Naruto towards herself, but Goku put his arm in front of her and shook his head. This surprised Kai Kai because this was one of the few times that Goku was serious. Kami stopped walking in front of Naruto and began speaking. For someone so young to have so much potential, it's astounding. I believe you will do many great things and continue to grow, perhaps with no end. Naruto blushed in embarrassment and began thanking Kami for his kind words. No need to thank me, I was merely speaking the truth. Chuckled Kami. Not trying to be rude or anything, but why did we come here Goku? Asked Krillin. That got everybody's attention and all eyes were on Goku. Brad it said that more Saiyans were coming to Earth, and by the sound of it, they're probably not friendly. That's why I decided to come here with you guys. We are going to need to train, and the lookout is a perfect way to train, don't you think? Asked Goku. Everybody paused and realized that Goku was thinking and planning ahead for once. It seemed Goku could think outside of a battle. A loud rumble could be heard coming from Goku. Goku gained embarrassed blush and scratched the back of his head. That and I was hungry, Goku finished. Everybody fell down in I'm style after hearing Goku's reasoning. Yes well while training for the arrival of the Saiyans is smart however, I don't think I can train you, said Kami. Why not? You seem strong Mr. Kami and you too Mr. Popo, Gohin said. Kami smiled and corrected himself, I will not personally train you, but rather you will be trained by a person named King Kai. Naruto put his hands behind his head and asked, so will all of us be trained by King Kai? No, only Gohan, Goku, and you Naruto will be trained by King Kai, said Kami. Mr. Kami, what about everyone else? Asked Gohan with his childlike innocence. Don't worry young Saiyan, everyone else will be trained by Mr. Popo, replied Kami. Wait a second. You don't think Gohan and Naruto are actually going to train with this person I have never met before? What kind of mother would I be if I let something like this happen? Yelled Kai Kai. Don't worry Kai Kai, I'll make sure they're okay. After all, I'm their father, responded Goku. I agree with dad on this one mom. I could use this training to better protect our family and friends. We'll need all the help we can get against the Saiyans. Said Naruto. Kai Kai didn't seem pleased with the idea of her children leaving her, but Naruto did put up a good point. Are you sure all three of you will get proper training? Three students is a lot for one teacher to train in. Actually how long until these Saiyans arrive? Asked Krillin. Everybody went silent as they realized they hadn't even thought about how long it would take for the Saiyans to arrive. That's where I come in. Bulma said cheerfully. You see, I grabbed this green device off that Saiyan you guys fought. If my calculations are correct then the locating aspect of the internal chip should give us the whereabouts of these Saiyans. If I can calculate the correct digits too. Bulma ranted on as she messed with the scouter and hooked it up to some other devices she had in the hovercraft. Aha! Shouted Bulma. If I'm correct, and I usually am, these Saiyans will arrive in one year. One year? Asked Krillin. Do you think King Kai can train all three of us in one year? Asked Naruto. I don't know, but we need to prepare for the Saiyans. Said Goku. That's where I come in, responded a voice from high above. Everybody looked up to see Piccolo floating with his arms crossed. Everyone except Naruto and Goku went into their battle stances. Naruto mentally cursed himself for letting his guard down and not sensing Piccolo. I can train the boy and make him stronger, said Piccolo as he landed on the platform. 
No you won't, I won't let you take Gohin, sad Kai Kai as she held Gohin behind her. I promise not to kill or seriously injure the brat. I will just train him to make him stronger, said Piccolo. Everybody stayed silent as they waited for Piccolo to make a wrong move. Finally, it was Goku to break the silence. I trust Piccolo to train Gohin. Now please Kai Kai, trust me this once. If something does happen to Gohin, I will take the blame. It's okay mom, I don't mind being trained by Mr. Piccolo, said Gohin. Kai Kai seemed very reluctant to accept this. Fine I'll let Gohin be trained by Piccolo under two conditions. The first condition is THST Gohin must come visit twice a week. The second condition is that if Gohin wants to stop training at any moment, you must return him home safely, Kai Kai gave a glare at Piccolo to prove she was serious. Great, this is going to hinder the training. Well at least I get to train the brat in the end, so I guess it's worth it, thought Piccolo. Fine, I'll accept these conditions while I train Gohin, announced Piccolo. Oh and one last thing, Goku suddenly raised his Kai and power level to around 1600. Everybody was tensed and sweating except Naruto who was used to this kind of power. Piccolo was sweating profusely and was beginning to remember that Goku is stronger than him. Gohin better be okay after your training, got the Piccolo. Asked Goku in a rare show of seriousness. Piccolo didn't trust his own voice, so he decided to nod instead. Good, Goku chirped out as the pressure of his Kai went away. Piccolo flew away, and Kai Kai gave Goku an appreciative look. Everyone talked the day away and made plans on how their training routine would go. Kami eventually took Goku and Naruto to the other world to meet King Kai. Bulma drove Kai Kai home as everyone else stayed to train with Mr. Popo. This next year would prove how far each warrior would push themselves into training. On another planet deep in space. Hey Vegeta, think we'll find these Dragon Balls? Asked a man in armor. This man looked tall and muscular. His eyes were onyx. He was bald and had a mustache that curved downwards at the edges of his lips. His armor was colored yellow and black. He had two long shoulder pads that were yellow, along with three long pads that went along his torso. His brown tail wrapped around him like a belt. He had gloves and boots on that were also colored yellow and black. His armor, gloves, and boots were all outlined in white. He wore a purple scouter. Maybe we will, maybe we won't. I personally plan on finding these dragon balls and wishing for immortality. The universe would be mine for the ruling. Let us go Nappa, I want to leave and gather these dragon balls as soon as I can. The now named Vegeta seemed slim and had spiky black hair that stood straight up. Vegeta's eyes were also onksy. He wore a red scouter and had his brown tail wrapped around him like a belt. His armor was the same as Nappa's but was white instead of black. He wore white boots and a blue bodysuit under his armor. I wouldn't be so cocky uncle, unless you want to end up like that fool Raditz, spoke a female Saiyan. The female Saiyan had on the same type of armor as Nappa, Raditz, and Vegeta. However, her color scheme was different. The scouter was attached to her left eye that was colored blue. The shoulder and torso pads were colored black. The chest and back pieces of the armor were colored a crimson red. She wore a black bodysuit under her armor. Her hair and eyes were black. Her hair was spiky and bushy. It reached to her shoulders. She had C-cup breasts and an hergless figure. Her brown tail was wrapped around her waist. She had a tan color to her skin. There was no fat on her body, but instead muscle. Nonsense, even I wouldn't fall to those earthlings like Raditz did. He was a disgrace to the Saiyan race, good riddance, Vegeta said. Everybody nodded at Vegeta's statement. It wasn't widely known, but Vegeta had an older sister. This sister married a Saiyan of elite status and had a child. This child was none other than his niece Kara. Sadly, Kara was orphaned when planet Vegeta was destroyed. Kara was with Vegeta at the time of her planet's destruction. This caused Vegeta to raise his nice and teach her the Saiyan lifestyle. This came along with an arrogant attitude. Even though Kara was at a young age of 14, she had already fraught creatures that would make grown men cry. Let us begin our journey to Earth and takes those dragon balls. Soon the universe will see the power of the Saiyan race. Yelled Vegeta with a smirk. But that being said, the trio of Saiyans left in their respective space pods. On the way to reach their own goals. Soon, Earth would face a new evil. One that would push everyone to their limits. On Snake Way. Naruto had been experiencing something strange lately. After leaving Kami's lookout, he had been having some problems with his Kai. He was currently running on the Serpent Road, Snake Way, towards King Kai. Kami had teleported both him and his father to the other world, and they got to meet King Yama. Naruto was surprised that King Kai was apparently stronger than King Yama. This was definitely going to be exciting. He had been running and flying for six months now, and he was getting tired. They had a year to prepare for the arriving Saiyans. They had already wasted half of the year by simply traveling. Naruto was going to ask King Kai about his Kai and why it was feeling so weird. It was as if it was changing for some reason. 
For example, instead of his energy being white when he charged up, it was black. His Kai blasts have also changed color from yellow to bright red. This was something he would have to look into. How much longer until we reach this King Kai? Complained Naruto. I have no idea but I'm getting tired of just running down this long road, replied Goku. As Naruto and Goku continued running, they finally reached the end of Snake Way. So? Now what? Asked a confused Goku. Naruto was also confused as he could not see anything inside until he looked up. Up there dad. Pointed Naruto to a green looking planet. Goku looked up and saw at what Naruto was pointing at. A small looking planet was located above Naruto and Goku. Let's go. Exclaimed Naruto. Both father and son jumped upwards towards the planet. They instantly sunk into the planet as they landed. They were brought to their knees but soon adjusted and were able to stand up within seconds. I'm going to guess you guys are the people Kami sent to be trained by me. Allow me to introduce myself, I am King Kai. Both Naruto and Goku looked up to see a person walking towards them. He had on sunglasses and had cricket-like antennas. He also blue-colored and wearing a black overcoat. It had the Kani for World King in the middle. He also had a red undershirt and brown boots. Hello King Kai, I'm Naruto and this is my father Goku. We were hoping to train and become strong enough to defeat the Saiyans that are coming to our planet, said Naruto. Would you please train us King Kai? Asked Goku. Um. I will train you under one condition, said King Kai. What is it? Asked Goku. You have to make me laugh. But okay, I guess we can do that, said Goku confused. Any ideas or jokes? Whispered Goku to his son. I have a joke in mind, let's see if he finds it funny, replied Naruto. Naruto walked up to King Kai and prepared to tell his joke. What does a house wear? Asked Naruto. I don't know, replied King Kai. The dress. King Kai seemed to be processing the joke when he suddenly started laughing. I get it, a dress like a dress, said King Kai as he continued laughing. Was that joke good enough King Kai? Asked an unsure Goku. King Kai quickly regained his composure and began speaking. Well Naruto's joke was very funny, you still have yet to provide one as well. Goku suddenly got an idea for a joke. Okay King Kai, I have a joke for you, said Goku. A ham sandwich walks into a bar and orders a drink. The bartender says sorry we don't serve food here. King Kai suddenly begins to explode with laughter. Both Naruto and Goku had the same thought running through their minds, this is gonna be a long six months. Somewhere deep in space. Vegeta, when are we going to arrive on Earth? Asked Nappa in an annoyed tone. Nappa was communicating with Vegeta over the scouter as they were flying throughout space in their space pods. I've down Nappa, we just have to travel a few more months, so be quiet and leave me alone, said Vegeta agitated. But Vegeta, can't we find some other way to travel? I'm tired of spending my time in a space pod. Unless you prefer flying towards Earth, I suggest you silence yourself Nappa before I blow your spaceship into space dust, said Vegeta, even more annoyed. Quit whining Nappa, you knew this trip would be long so stop complaining, it's unbecoming of a Saiyan, said Kara, putting an end to Nappa's complaining. Vegeta had a small smirk on his face as he grew even prouder of his nice. He had taught her the Saiyan traditions and was glad she was expressing them. In Vegeta's point of view, no enemy of a Saiyan deserves mercy or forgiveness. Kindness and mercy was considered weak to Vegeta, and he would not allow any relatives of his become weak. It made things even better for Vegeta when Kara adopted his cold attitude and excitement for battle. Nobody could possibly stand up to the royal family of the Saiyan race. Soon, he would gather the Dragon Balls and grant immortality to himself and Kara. He originally planned to gain immortality for himself, but decided to involve his niece as she had grown on him. Vegeta wouldn't admit it, but he cared deeply for his niece. Having raised her caused Vegeta to watch over her and act as a parent to her. However, Vegeta was very strict and made it clear that Kara was not to be weak, as it would disgrace the Saiyan race. Nappa, Vegeta and Kara were very prideful. To them, a Saiyan is nothing without his pride. Kara is right Nappa, quit your whining. We'll be at Earth when we reach it, so be quiet, said Vegeta. The conversation slowly faded and silence overtook the Saiyans. The rest of the trip would be spent sleeping or strategizing in Kara's case. She was very alert and careful when meeting new enemies. These people on Earth could prove to be a challenge. While Kara was raised under the guidance of Vegeta, she was different from her uncle. While Kara adopted many traits from her uncle, she didn't adopt his sense of overconfidence. Kara was careful when facing a new opponent. She did not underestimate her opponent because she knew it could mean death in an instant. Uncle, what makes the Saiyan known as Kakarot important? Asked Kara. Vegeta smirked. Kakarot is a low-class Saiyan. Once he was born, he was sent to a planet in order to eradicate all life on it. This just shows that he is a disgrace to the Saiyan way. Personally, I believe there is nothing special about him. Kara stayed silent and continued to hear her uncle speak. 
however, he was able to defeat Raditz. This still means nothing as Raditz was a weakling, but now we know that Kakarot could be stronger than we expected. Yet, he is still nothing compared to us. Don't forget his brat, what was his name? Naruto. Nappa said through the scouter. Ah yes, how could I have forgotten? Naruto, the half Saiyan. Apparently this kid is pretty strong. He might even be around your age Kara, said Vegeta. Kara was surprised that there was a Saiyan still alive that was around her age. While she did love hanging around her uncle, meeting somebody her own age would be refreshing. Even if she found his name weird for a Saiyan. Kara was excited to battle and defeat any opponent she would face on Earth. However, for now she would be patient and wait for the upcoming battles. Back on Earth. Currently, Gohan was relaxing by taking a nap under a tree. He was exhausted from training all day. One thing was for sure, Piccolo was not taking it easy on Gohan. Under Piccolo's tutelage, Gohan's reflexes, speed, strength and intelligence had increased by leaps and bounds. Gohan could give Piccolo a run for his money if he were to go all out. Gohan's Kai manipulation had also increased which helped him perform Kai attacks. Gohan opened his eyes as he felt a shadow over him. As he opened his eyes, he could see Piccolo standing over him. Piccolo's face was stern as he stared at Gohan. Gohan quickly scrambled to his feet so he could respectively talk to Piccolo. Hi Mr. Piccolo, I thought we were done with training for the day. Is there something else we're going to do? Asked Gohan. I think it's time for you to get familiar with the speed of a battle, said Piccolo. What do you mean Mr. Piccolo? While you have been doing well in your training, it means nothing if you can't properly use it. In an actual fight, you might only have a few seconds to come up with an idea or a strategy on how to counteract your opponent, Piccolo explained. The constant flow of fists and kicks and quickly overcome you if you are not careful. Today, we are going to the lookout to see some spars. This will help you become familiar with the idea of a battle, Piccolo said as he finished his explanation. Gohan quickly understood what Piccolo meant and nodded. Piccolo flew towards Kami's tower, while Gohan called on Nimbus. Gohan and Piccolo quickly arrived at the lookout. Yamcha, Krillin, Tian, Jiaotsu, and Kami turned to see Piccolo and Gohan. Piccolo nudged Gohan forward in order to begin the spars. Piccolo nodded towards Kami and flew away from the lookout. The spars between Yamcha, Krillin, Jiaotsu, and Tian fascinated Gohan. He couldn't bell of the speed and agility that was used in the spars. After a few hours of non-stop sparring, Yamcha decided to say something. How about you join in Gohan? Gohan blushed in embarrassment and shook his head. Why not? Well because. I can't fly yet. Everybody was stunned that Gohan wasn't taught how to fly yet and decided to change that. Come here Gohan, today you are going to learn how to fly, said Kami. Soon, Gohan would learn to fly and even join in some of the spars. His skills were put to the test as he slowly adjusted to the feeling of a battle. He knew he would have to work hard for the oncoming Saiyans. On King Kai's planet. King Kai, would you happen to know why my Kai is changing color? Asked Naruto. What do you mean? You see King Kai, my energy was originally white and yellow in color, but for some reason it has changed to black and bright red respectively, said Naruto. While this does seem strange, I have a theory. Are you half or full Saiyan Naruto? Asked King Kai. I was born as a half Saiyan, why does it matter? The Saiyan cells within your body could be trying to overwhelm your earthling cells. So what could happen? Scientifically, you're transforming into a full-blooded Saiyan with your Kai changing being a byproduct of the transformation. So I could end up a full-blooded Saiyan like my father? Asked Naruto. In theory, yes, however I'm not certain of it just yet. We might need to wait and see what could be causing this Kai change. If anything, his Kai changing could be a blessing in disguise. What do you mean King Kai? Asked Naruto in a curious manner. Your Kai could actually become denser and stronger than a regular full-blooded Saiyan, but yet again, this is just a theory. Explained King Kai. Will anything else be affecting my son? Asked Goku in concern. Don't worry, I believe the cells are the only thing changing within his body. His personality and attitude should stay the same. Everything besides his genetics should stay fine. It could be because of a genetic mutation, but I'm still not sure. Thank you King Kai, at least we have something to base this off of, said Naruto gratefully. King Kai nodded and smiled. Okay, let's get started on a training regime then. I want 100 laps around my planet, 200 push-ups, 500 sit-ups, and a spar for 30 minutes, finished King Kai. Goku and Naruto grew determined at the thought of the training and were ready to defend their planet. Naruto looked at Goku who looked right back and nodded. A competition began between the two to see who could finish the training first. Little did they know that the Saiyans were stronger than they thought. King Kai's planet. Naruto had been training along with his father for five months straight. Naruto was currently focused on sparring against his father. Besides physical training, he had learned the Kaioken. 
He had taken many days on solely learning the Kaioken and mastering it. He could go multiply the Kaioken by five before his body gives out. However, he was still having trouble on mastering the spirit bomb, unlike his father who had already mastered both techniques. Naruto along with his father would train to the bone. Even after his father and King Kai would rest, Naruto would still stay awake, training. He had been doing that every day since he had arrived on King Kai's planet. While Naruto knew that rest was important, he just couldn't stop training until he was satisfied. He would even have to crawl to bed as some days he just couldn't walk anymore. Another thing that Naruto had worked on was his tail. He learned from his father that if someone was to grab and squeeze his tail, he could lose his energy quickly. After two weeks were spent on solely focusing on his tail, Naruto could say that his tail was no longer a weakness for him. This is bad. Very bad. Suddenly shouted King Kai. A sudden shout broke Naruto and Goku out of their fight and looked towards King Kai. What's the matter King Kai? Asked Goku. The Saiyans. I thought we had one more month, but they're coming in one more week. Goku and Naruto were stunned, they couldn't travel to Earth in one week. It took them six months just to reach King Kai's planet. Wait, I have an idea. King Kai, can you help me contact our friends on Earth? Specifically Master Rashi. Asked Naruto. Of course, just put your hand on my back and think of what you want to say. Naruto put his hand on King Kai's back and focused on what he wanted to say. On Earth. Master Rashi could be seen on his couch reading a perverted magazine. His giggles could be heard throughout the Kame house. Hello. Master Rashi, is this you? Asked a voice that seemingly came from nowhere. Who's there? Asked Rashi as he looked everywhere for the source of the voice. This is Naruto, Master Rashi. I was wondering, do you have the Dragon Balls collected? Of course we do. We finished collecting all of them around two months ago in case of an emergency, said Rashi. Great, at least we have some good news. Change of plans Master Rashi, you're going to have to use those Dragon Balls to teleport Goku to Earth in a week. The Saiyans are appearing on Earth faster than we thought. At least my father will be able to help fend off the Saiyans while I travel on my own back towards Earth, finished Naruto. Naruto had debated on telling Rashi to tell the others about the weakness in the Saiyan's tail, but decided against it for two reasons. Reason number one, he didn't want someone risking their lives in the middle of the battle just to reach for one of the Saiyan's tails. Reason number two, he doubted that the Saiyans wouldn't rid their tails of the weakness. Rashi digested all of the information he was given. This would surely be problematic. They had less than a week to keep on training. He just hoped that the training made a big enough difference for the earthlings. Quick question Naruto, why is it your father that's coming and not yourself? I'm not disappointed with Goku coming or anything I'm just curious on why your father should come instead of yourself, wondered Rashi. Well, I'm still currently trying to learn a technique that my father had already mastered. I usually master techniques rather quickly, but this one has taken me a little longer. I should be leaving King Kai's planet within two days to start my travel to Earth, explained Naruto. Hmm. Okay. I got it, I'll also explain to everyone else that the Saiyans are coming within a week. Thank you for the information Naruto, it's very helpful. We'll make sure to bring Goku here within the week as well. Good luck on your travel here Naruto, we're going to need every fighter we have, said Rashi. You're welcome Master Rashi and be careful. We'll be there soon, said Naruto. The transmission slowly cut out until there was no signal between King Kai and Master Rashi anymore. Back on King Kai's planet. So it seems everything is settled then? Asked King Kai. Yep, sure seems like it. I just hope I can make it in time, said Naruto. Goku walked towards his son and placed a hand on his shoulder and offered a comforting smile. Don't worry Naruto, I believe you can reach the earth in time. Sure it sounds impossible, how do you reach a place that takes six months time within a week? However, I'm sure you'll find a way, said Goku. Thanks dad, now I know I can do it. Let's get ready then. We can't let this week go to waste, said Naruto. While Goku didn't exactly like the idea of making Naruto travel on his own, he understood that the situation was very important. He just hoped that Naruto would make it in time. Everyone nodded, they would have to hope that the training they were in had helped enough so they could defeat the oncoming Saiyans. One week later. Inkai overlooked the earth as he stood on his own planet. He was standing by himself as Goku had been teleported yesterday and Naruto had left within the third day. Naruto was flying at his fastest speed. He had just barely finished mastering the spirit bomb, sadly it had cost him an extra day. Before he left, King Kai had prepared a large feast. This helped him greatly because it restored any energy he might have lost. As he was flying towards Earth on Snake Way, he suddenly remembered something, the Kaioken. After cursing himself for his stupidity, he quickly activated the technique. He just knew he was going to regret what he was about to do. Kaioken times four. Was suddenly shouted, and Naruto was gone in a blink of an eye. 
Kami was waiting at King Yama's palace to teleport him, so he just had to arrive there. He was told by his father through King Kai that somebody would have a senzu bean for him on the battlefield. He just prayed that he was going to be able to make it in time. On Earth. Boku had just woken up and was ready to start the day. He would be prepared to defend the Earth and his family, even if it costs him his life. Aikai had hugged and cried on Goku once he had been teleported back to Earth. However, that only lasted for a short while, as his wife had asked where their son was. He had to explain that their son would arrive soon and they would have to wait. After taking a beating from his wife for leaving her and Gohan, Goku found Gohan and brought him home. Imagine when Gohan was surprised in finding his father during a training session. He brought his father into a hug and said he was so happy that he returned. Goku had simply smiled and returned the hug. Piccolo had simply nodded towards Goku when he picked up Gohan. He was ready to meet these Saiyans and fight. He was just itching for a battle. Once Goku had returned to Earth and met his family, he had gathered his friends. They weren't as surprised as his family because Rashi had told them about the wish in advance. Still, it was surprising to see a friend they hadn't seen in a year. After Goku woke up and said goodbye to his wife, he flew with his son towards the lookout. They had decided the previous day on meeting there. Goku and Gohan soon arrived at the lookout with everyone already there. Hey guys, you ready for today? Asked Krillin in a nervous laugh. Don't worry Krillin, just be calm and collected. Use your mind and don't make rookie mistakes, said Tien. This seemed to have an effect on Krillin as he calmed down. Goku looked around and focused on his friend's power levels. Everyone had a power level of 1000 at the minimum. This was also when they were suppressed. Even Chiaotsu's suppressed power level was at 1300. Goku smiled and hoped they could defeat the Saiyans. Sorry I'm late guys, but I finally got the Senzu beans, said Yamcha as he held up a small bag that contained the beans. Yamcha was asked by Goku to gather the Senzu beans and had complied. Do you know how many senzu beans are in there exactly? Asked Piccolo. Well Piccolo doesn't exactly consider these people his friends, he knew he wouldn't be able to take on the Saiyans on his own. Everybody was a little unsettled with his presence, but otherwise didn't comment. Oh uh, yeah, about nine, why? Asked Yamcha in confusion. What is confusing on wanting to know how many beans we have? The amount we have could save us. It's always better to know how many beans we have so we know to limit the use of the beans. However, you wouldn't know. You clearly don't use your mind often, do you? Asked Piccolo with a smirk. Why you? Said an agitated Yamcha. Let's calm down, we don't need this tension. Let's focus on the enemy instead of each other. Remember that teamwork is going to be needed in the battle, said Kami. Yamcha just settled on giving Piccolo a glare. Suddenly, everyone tensed up. Did you guys sense that? Asked a serious Goku. Yeah, it looks like the Saiyans just landed. Let's go down there and let them find us, said Tien. Everybody nodded and flew towards the grass plains. They now knew their enemies were here, today would determine the fate of the earth. Ten minutes earlier. The city that was bustling with life was suddenly impacted by three unknown objects. Everybody gathered around the craters created by the unidentified objects. The unknown object suddenly let out a loud hiss and opened. Three figures walked out of the objects and looked around. So this is earth. Doesn't look like much, snorted Nappa. I find these earthlings rather annoying. If they keep on staring at me, I'm going to kill them, stated Kara. Many police officers broke through the crowd and looked at the three beings in front of him. One of the police officers in the front began speaking. You three are going to the police station for questioning. If you resist, we will use force. Now follow us and don't try anything funny. As the officers walked away, they noticed the three beings had still not moved. One officer moved towards Kara and brought a pair of handcuffs out. Before anything else could happen, Kara materialized a Kai blast in her hand and aimed it towards the officer. The officer took the hint and began to run away. I'm beginning to lose my restraint, said Kara, as she grew increasingly agitated. All of the officers pointed their weapons towards the three figures and prepared to fire. However, Kara had grown incredibly angry that these lowly beings would dare and try to harm them. She found a civilian that had a smug smirk, as if he thought they would be captured and detained by the officers. Without warning, Kara launched her Kai attack with great precision. The Kai blast turned into a thin beam and blasted through the civilian's body. He gurgled blood and drooped onto the ground. Kara stood there and smirked at what she had done. Before anybody could react to what had just occurred, Nappa suddenly raised two fingers into the air. The entire city was demolished within seconds as the Kai blast slowly died down. Congratulations Nappa. On being even dumber than I thought, finished Vegeta with a glare. What do you mean Vegeta? The people here were clearly being a nuisance, so I decided to wipe them out. How is that dumb? Said an irate Nappa. Because you idiotic oaf, there could have been a Dragon Ball nearby. Did you even think about that as you destroyed the city? Asked Vegeta. 
Nappa quickly shut his mouth and decided not to speak. He just realized that he could have destroyed the very reason they came to Earth in the first place. Nonetheless, what done is done. We'll just have to help that no Dragon Ball was destroyed in your meteor. Nappa grew anger that Vegeta called his attack mediocre. Before he could say anything however, all three scouters lit up. Hmm. So it seems that the power levels are in this direction, said Vegeta as he looked towards a specific location. Let's get moving, my blood demands a challenge, said Kara as her bloodlust increased. Everyone could agree to that and flew towards the area where the power levels were located. They hoped that these earthlings could put up a fight. But the Z fighters. So, how are we going to do this? Asked Krillin as he sweated heavily. With shaking, we're going to group up and see how the battle plays out. Don't forget to use teamwork. Let's show them how strong the earthlings are, finished Tien with a smirk. Well, here they come, announced Goku. The HS3 Saiyans came into view and landed in front of the Z fighters. There was about a 20-foot distance between the two groups. The Z fighters were surprised at seeing a female Saiyan, but quickly regained their composure. So Kakarot, you couldn't even finish your mission. Asked Vegeta. Stop calling me Kakarot, my name is Goku. Yelled Goku as he was fed up with people calling him Kakarot. His name was Goku for crying out loud. So you don't even remember your own name? What a pity, stated Vegeta as he shook his head. Uncle, I don't mean to interrupt, but where is the young Saiyan? The one called Naruto. Asked Kara. Hmm. Now that you mention him, I don't think I see him either. I doubt the other young Saiyan is called Naruto. He doesn't look around your age, said Nappa as he looked towards Gohan. You shouldn't worry about Naruto, we're your enemies, said Piccolo. Aren't you the one who only singed Raditz's leg hair? Said Vegeta as he smirked. The only response Vegeta got was a growl from Piccolo. Ah, so I was correct. To be honest, I don't consider any of you a challenge. I only consider Kakarot as a challenge, and he might only provide me with a warm-up. Hell, I consider the young Saiyan as more of a challenge than all of you, said Vegeta bluntly. Goku narrowed his eyes while everyone else grew angry at the Saiyan's statement. Enough of this chit-chat, I came to fight, said Nappa. For once, Vegeta and Kara actually agreed with the bald Saiyan. I'll go first Vegeta, said Nappa with a sinister smirk. You take the group of fighters along with Kara, I'll take on Kakarot, said Vegeta. If I may uncle, I'd rather not fight people who are not worthy to even lick my boots. Nappa can have his fun, I'm disappointed that the other Saiyan isn't here, but oh well, said Kara with closed eyes. The group of friends were getting rather anger and annoyed that these Saiyans kept underestimating them. They would show them. It's all fine with me, said Nappa as he suddenly charged forward. Meanwhile, Vegeta and Kakarot made a silent agreement and flew towards a barren wasteland. All of the Z fighters were able to determine the name of each Saiyan as they talked. Now they knew the names of their attackers. Kara simply stayed on the sidelines and watched Nappa have his fun with bored eyes. But Vegeta and Goku. So Kakarot, ready to begin our battle. Normally I would offer you a chance to work with us, but I don't need any more dead weight. I hope you can provide me with a warm-up before I kill you, said Vegeta with a smirk. Goku stayed silent and entered his fighting stance, with one arm behind his back and the other arm in front of his body. His fingers were in a claw formation, and his legs were slightly bent. Vegeta entered his own fighting stance. One arm was to his side while the other arm was near his face. The arm to his side was closed, and the other arm had his hand open with his palm showing. His legs were also slightly bent. Both Saiyans waited in anticipation. Suddenly, both Saiyans met in the middle and started exchanging blows. Goku gave a knee which was met with Vegeta's own knee. Vegeta threw a punch that connected with Goku's face, but received a kick in his chest. Goku gave a kick towards Vegeta's head that he dodged and even caught Goku's leg. Goku was caught by surprise, while Vegeta smirked. Vegeta pulled Goku's leg in his direction and elbowed Goku's chest. Goku was sent into many rock formations until Vegeta appeared behind him with his leg stretched back. As Vegeta kicked where Goku was, all he hit was after image. Goku appeared behind Vegeta and kicked him into the rock formations. He then kicked Vegeta upwards and brought his hands together. He finished the combo by slamming Vegeta back into the earth. Goku then landed a few meters away on a rock. Vegeta could be seen getting up and having an annoyed expression of his face. Congratulations Kakarot, you've made me want to kill you even more, said Vegeta as he suddenly appeared in front of Goku. Vegeta threw a punch which left Goku with no choice but to block. Goku put his arms in an X formation to soften the blow. Vegeta then appeared behind Goku and kicked his back. As Goku flew through the air from the kick, Vegeta appeared again and punched Goku in the stomach, hard. Goku spat up blood and received a uppercut from Vegeta. To finish it off, Vegeta appeared above Goku and launched a Kai Blast towards Goku. Goku was sent flying back down to Earth with the Kai Blast exploding. As the dust settled, Goku was seen with his clothing torn. 
his guy was tattered and his pants had holes in them. As Goku began panting and trying to recover his breath, Vegeta began talking. Look at yourself Kakarot, you can't even handle me when I'm warming up. I knew you were weak, but it seems you're pathetically weak, chuckled Vegeta. I wasn't using my full power, but it looks like I'll have two now, stated Goku as he began powering up. What, he was holding back. How dare that low class Saiyan hold back against me, an elite. I'll show him how pathetic he is, even at his full power. Thought Vegeta as he became irate. Ahhhhh. Yelled Goku as his Kai was surrounding his body. Even Kara and Nappa took notice of his power. Their scouters began beeping when Goku started powering up. So his power level is 23,000. I'll admit, that's impressive for a low class Saiyan, but it also means that the people here can suppress their power levels, we'll have to be careful, thought Kara. The power level of 23,000. HMPH, Vegeta can still kick his ass, thought Nappa. 23,000, huh? Not bad for a low class Saiyan, but I'll still reign supreme, thought Vegeta. Goku was nearing the end of his transformation as his Kai began to fade. However, what nobody expected was for Goku to let out a sudden shout. This made his power level spike even more. No way, how could his power level be 34,000? That's impossible, a low class Saiyan as himself shouldn't be able to reach a power level so high. It's near my own power level, an elite's power level. It just doesn't make sense. His power level was around 2000 when he fought Raditz. How can it jump so much in one year? Thought Vegeta as he began to get even angrier. Nappa began to wonder if any other of these fighters could suppress their power level so much. Kara was wondering if she should help her uncle, but quickly decided against it. It would hurt her uncle's pride if she interfered in the battle. She knew her uncle would be victorious in the battle. The Z fighters were in shock and awe. They never knew that Goku contained so much power. This gave them hope that they would defeat the Saiyan. What do you think now? Am I still just a warm-up? Asked Goku with a smirk. Usually, Goku wouldn't act like this in a fight. However, his Saiyan blood was giving him a hint of arrogance. Vegeta was beyond furious. How could a low-class Saiyan mock and taunt elite like himself? He would make Kakarot pay for this embarrassment, starting by killing him and then exploding his planet. How dare you? You're insignificant compared to me and yet you dare taunt me. I'll show why you don't mess with elite like myself, Kakarot. Said Vegeta as he began powering up himself. His Kai began to shroud his body. Goku let Vegeta power up because Vegeta lended him the same courtesy. Besides, his Saiyan blood demanded that both warriors fight at their max potential. Goku wanted a good fight, so he let Vegeta reach his max. But the final shout, Vegeta's Kai dissipated and he stood there with a cocky smirk. How do you like it Kakarot? My power level is 46,000. How do you expect to defeat me now? Asked Vegeta with a taunting smirk. Goku could tell that Vegeta wasn't lying. He could sense Vegeta's power level, and it was higher than his own. He knew that the Kaioken might be needed. Both Saiyans stared at each other with their new power levels. They rushed each other, and the blows became stronger than before. Every punch, kick, and Kai blast was thrown with great precision and accuracy. Even though Vegeta had the advantage power level-wise, Goku was holding his own. Both fighters separated from each other and stared at the opposing warrior. Well Kakarot, looks like you can keep up with me even at this power level. However, that won't last long, Vegeta said with a smirk. Goku just stared and stayed silent. He would have to use the Kaioken if it came to it. He just hoped that his friends were doing well. Vegeta rushed Goku as he did the same. Their battle was going to help determine the fate of Earth. With Nappa and Kara. Looks like Vegeta is going all out, so I'll do the same, Nappa smirked as he began to power up. Krillin saw this as an opportunity to damage Nappa while his guard was down. Before he could rush Nappa, Piccolo grabbed his shoulder. Don't try and damage him while he's powering up, said Piccolo in a serious tone. What, why not? Asked Krillin with a shout. His partner back there is keeping an eye on us. While she may seem relaxed and bored, her body language shows that she is ready to strike at a moment's notice. She would take you down before you could do anything, finished Piccolo. Krillin could only nod and think that he could have just ended his life because he wasn't thinking. A loud yell was heard that signified the end of Nappa's transformation. Well what now weaklings, feeling scared. Taunted Nappa. For those who can't tell what my power level is, it's 27,000. This surprised everyone, including Piccolo. While this Saiyan is weaker than the one fighting Goku, he was still not a pushover. Everybody, forget about holding back. It's clear that the Saiyans are stronger than we thought. We're going to have to fight them at full power, stated Piccolo. Everybody nodded and released any power they were holding back. Ah, so let's see these puny power levels, said Nappa as he activated his scouter to focus on each individual. So the Namekian's power level is 17,000. The Saiyan's is 8,250. 
the bald one's power level is 11,000. The power level is 9,500 for the insect with the red circles on his face. The one with the girly long hair has a power level of 10,000. Finally, we have the three-eyed freak with a power level of 13,000. I don't know if I should be disappointed or embarrassed at the power levels you people displayed, Nappa said as he smirked. Why you, I'll show you why you don't mess with us. Shouted Krillin. Then bring a tiny, responded Nappa. The Z fighters quickly approached the Saiyan and began to work together. Krillin brought his fist into the Saiyan's face, while Gohan brought his foot to the side of his skull. Yamcha appeared behind the Saiyan and was ready to launch a furry of strikes. Piccolo was bringing his fist onto the Saiyan's torso. Tian and Chiaotzu were in the air floating above the Saiyan. Tian prepared a tri beam, while Chiaotzu prepared a Kai blast. While the speed of the Z fighters was impressive, Nappa was quicker. He grabbed the young Saiyan's foot and slammed him hard into Krillin. He clotheslined Piccolo and smashed his fist onto his chest. Nappa turned around and slammed his knee into Yamcha's stomach. This caused Yamcha to lose his breath and spit out blood. Nappa reappeared behind Tian and Chiaotzu in a blink of an eye. He slammed Tian into the ground and punched Chiaotzu into a mountain. Nappa slowly floated down and looked at the scattered bodies of the Z fighters. Come on, don't tell me this is your best. I haven't even broken a sweat. This guy is stronger than he looks. Let's catch him by surprise, whispered Gohan into Krillin's ear as he got off of the bald monk. Yeah, that might work, whispered Krillin as he nodded back. Piccolo was able to overhear the conversation between Krillin and Gohan. He decided to include himself into Gohan's strategy. Piccolo was able to meet Gohan's eyes and nodded. Gohan was instantly able to understand what his mentor meant and decided to go through with his plan. Piccolo rushed the Saiyan as the Saiyan smirked. Piccolo gave a kick towards Nappa's head which he just caught. However, he didn't expect for the Namekian to launch a Kai Blast from his mouth. Nappa had to block the short-range Kai Blast with his forearm as his other hand gripped the Namekian's leg. While this quick exchange happened, he didn't notice Krillin appear behind him. Krillin had his signature move, the Destructo Disc, in his hand as it was behind his back. Gohan was preparing the Masenko to its highest power in the background and intended to use it on Nappa. Well, Kara could have helped Nappa, she decided not to. Nappa was considered a disgrace to the Saiyan race in her eyes and didn't deserve to live. The only reason she didn't kill him by now was because he was a Saiyan and there were very few of them. However, she decided that perhaps the Saiyan race would be better with one less disgraceful Saiyan. Nappa was busy recovering from the Kai Blast and didn't notice the Destructo Disc until it was too late. He swung Piccolo and intended to smack him into Krillin. Yet, it was not to be. As Nappa was mid-swing with Piccolo, he also noticed Gohan's Masenko coming towards him. With a grunt he let go of Piccolo and jumped backwards to avoid both Kai Blasts. However, as Nappa was distracted in avoiding the Kai Blasts, Tien appeared behind him and kicked him into the direction of the Kai Blasts. Nappa gained a fearful expression before it turned into an angry one. How could he, an elite Saiyan, fall to the tricks of these insignificant insects? The Destructo Disc was released nigh Krillin and flew towards Nappa. Krillin's Destructo Disc was too close for Nappa to completely dodge the attack, but we was able to move slightly out of the way. The Kai attack was able to inch into the armor of the Saiyan and slide to the side of him. While Nappa didn't take the full force of the attack, he was still affected. The attack had left a gash across his stomach which was slowly bleeding. He was lucky to have made the attack slide by him. He could have died had he not dodged. Even though Nappa was able to dodge the attack, Gohan's Masenko finally reached him. The attack appeared on his right which he had to block using his right arm only. A large explosion occurred which made dust fly into the air. As the dust settled, Nappa could be seen looking worse for wear. His armor was slashed on his stomach, he was bleeding from a gash, and the entire right side of his armor was destroyed or severely damaged. The right side of his body was also damaged with him bleeding from his shoulder, arm, and leg. There were multiple scratches on his body. You, you, insects. Shouted Nappa with his Kai surrounding him. Did you think I would be taken down by your puny attacks? How dare you draw the blood of an elite Saiyan? You shall all die. Yelled an extremely irate Nappa. Nappa gathered a large amount of Kai as it surrounded his body. Starting with you. Nappa shouted as he looked at Krillin. Before anybody could react, Nappa had slammed his fist into Krillin's face which sent him flying through many mountains. He was unconscious in a moment. You're next. Nappa quickly turned towards Piccolo and slammed his knee onto Piccolo's stomach. Piccolo spat out his own blood. Nappa then grabbed the Namekian's neck and slammed him into the ground. A large crater was formed. Just like Krillin, Piccolo was unconscious in a moment. You too. Nappa said as he focused on Tien. Before Tien knew it, he was already lodged in the side of a mountain courtesy of Nappa's fist. Nappa followed up the attack with a Kai blast from his hand. And finally, you. Nappa yelled as he charged at Gohan. 
Gohan didn't have enough time to react to the enraged Saiyan. Kara was thoroughly shocked, she didn't expect Nappa to show such brutality. Maybe he wasn't such a waste of space after all. Before Nappa could lay a hand on Gohan, he was launched into a mountain. In front of Gohan was his big brother, Naruto with his leg outstretched. Naruto surveyed the field and noticed the bloodied forms of his friends. Big bro, you're finally here. Shouted Gohan as he hugged his brother. Of course, I wouldn't let anybody hurt you, smiled Naruto in return as he hugged his younger brother. Big bro. So this is the Saiyan called Naruto. Thought Kara as she studied Naruto's appearance. Gohan, I want you to gather our friends and leave this area. It's going to get a lot more graphic here, you don't need to see this, responded Naruto in a serious tone. Gohan quickly nodded and went to gather the rest of the Z fighters to leave. Where do you think you're going? I'm going to kill you both. Shouted Nappa as he rushed Naruto. Naruto simply waited for Nappa's fist to be one inch from his face. Naruto then ducked under the punch and delivered a severe uppercut to Nappa's chest. Nappa coughed up blood and wobbled for a few steps. He then fell face first onto the ground. Nappa was dead as there was no Kai signature coming off of him. Naruto would not allow anybody to harm his younger brother, even if it meant he had to kill. Does anybody have a senzu bean? Asked Naruto. Yo, Naruto. Take the senzu bean. Shouted Yamcha as he tossed Naruto a senzu bean. Naruto simply nodded in appreciation and ate the senzu bean. Using the Kaioken times 4 all the way here made him extremely tired, even if he might not show it. For some reason, he felt even stronger than before after eating the senzu bean. Kara had gained a genuine blush watching Naruto kill Nappa with one hit. She would gladly take Naruto over Nappa any day. She grew excited at the fact that she would finally get a challenge soon. One thing was for sure, son Naruto had finally arrived to the battlefield. With Goku and Vegeta. The exchange of blows could be heard throughout the area. The echoes of the fighting could be seen for a split second. Vegeta aimed a punch at Goku, while Goku ducked and delivered a kick to Vegeta's chin. Vegeta tilted his head to the side and aimed a elbow for Goku's stomach. Goku brought his knee up to block, but the impact sent him skidding back a few meters. Vegeta didn't let up and followed Goku as he was sent skidding. Vegeta kicked Goku in the left side of his torso. Before Goku could recover, Vegeta had already sent an uppercut to Goku's chin. This also caught Goku off guard. Vegeta kept on delivering blow after with Goku either blocking it or receiving the full force of the blow. Goku was in a corner and needed to get out of it soon. However, Vegeta didn't leave him with an opening. Vegeta ended his barrage with a kick to Goku's back, which left him lodged in the side of mountain. Pathetic Kakarot, I expected better than this worthless excuse of a fight. Perhaps I should just end your life right now, what do you think? Asked Vegeta with a sinister smirk. Goku was merely panting and trying to catch his breath. He had small cuts and bruises over his body, but otherwise seemed stable. Not even going to answer me Kakarot. Fine, then I'll just kill you no. Vegeta then rushed Goku intending to end his life on the next blow. Goku was staring at the ground and yelled something that was drastically changed the course of the fight. Kaioken times two. Shouted Goku as he was suddenly surrounded by a crimson looking Kai. Vegeta was caught off guard by the sudden shout and didn't expect the punch that was delivered to his face. As Vegeta was sent flying through the air, Goku reappeared behind Vegeta. Goku gave a kick to Vegeta's back that sent him flying upwards. Goku then reappeared above Vegeta and smashed him downwards with a slam of both hands. Goku reappeared below Vegeta and gave an earth-shattering knee to Vegeta's back. Vegeta landed on Goku's knee which left him spitting out blood. Goku then ended the combo with another slam into Vegeta's chest. The slam engraved Vegeta onto the rocky floor. Vegeta was surprised by the amount of damage he received in such a short time. One second he was going to kill Kakarot, the next second, he was getting tossed around like a chew toy. He wasn't going to take this lying down. Vegeta rose from the ground in an explosion of Kai. He had his hands out to the sides of him, signaling that he had pushed his Kai outwards to escape his confines. Kakarot, I'm done playing games. I will kill you now. Without hesitation, Vegeta rushed Goku with the intent to kill. Goku merely narrowed his eyes and prepared to take down Vegeta. But Naruto and Kara. The battlefield was empty all around Naruto. The only people there was the unknown female Saiyan in front of him and the dead Saiyan that was located on the ground. Gohan had gathered his friends with the help of Yamcha and Shiatsu. Yamcha had given each of his friends a senzu bean and left with a group. Naruto's body tensed when he looked at the female Saiyan. He felt uneasy around her, like she would kill him in a second if he let her. So you're the famous Naruto I keep wondering about. Allow me to introduce myself, my name is Kara, said Kara with her arms crossed and eyes closed. I don't care what your name is, you guys hurt my friends, stated Naruto in an angry tone. Well that's rather rude. Besides, you friends were weak and the weak don't deserve to live, declared Kara. 
I don't care what you think, I'll make you pay for what you've done, said Naruto as he began to gather his kai around his body. Black kai. Well that's a first, thought Kara curiously. Before we begin our battle, what's your max power level? It's clear that the beings on this planet can suppress their power levels, so our scouters are useless in that regard, said Kara. As if I'd tell you, you'll just have to find out the hard way, said Naruto as he rushed Kara. That's too bad, said Kara as she also rushed Naruto. The punch connected to Naruto's cheek, but Kara was surprised when Naruto didn't budge at all. In fact, it seemed as if he didn't even feel it. The moment of surprise proved negatively for Kara as Naruto landed a kick to her stomach. The kick was followed up with an uppercut to her chin and another kick which sent Kara flying. Kara regained her bearings while in the air and was enraged. While she doesn't underestimate her enemies, she didn't believe her enemy could do this much damage to her so quick. Kara rushed Naruto but was unprepared for the Kai blast he had sent to her. She dodged but many others followed. She dodged each Kai blast with a duck or jump. Some Kai blasts had to be blocked by her arms because the speed was too fast for her to dodge. Naruto simply stayed silent and kept firing his Kai blasts. He wasn't going to take any chances against the Saiyan named Kara. She would easily end him if he let his guard down, so he would keep her on the ropes as long as he could. Kara grew annoyed at the constant Kai blasts and prepared one of her own. After she had dodged a recent Kai blast, she sent her own Kai blast towards Naruto. Expecting this, Naruto deflected Kara's Kai blast towards a nearby mountain. Even though he had not shown it, the Kai blast had stung Naruto's hand. The entire mountain was destroyed by a simple Kai blast. Naruto had to be extra careful now. Kara appeared behind Naruto and delivered a kick. Naruto quickly ducked and dodged the kick. However, Kara brought her leg down towards Naruto's skull. Naruto saw the incoming leg and acted quickly. He was able to grab the leg and pull Kara closer to him. As Kara was sent towards Naruto, Naruto elbowed Kara in her jaw. He then punched her torso with a great deal of force. Yet, this didn't put Kara down. She then responded by delivering a kick to Naruto's jaw and sending her own Kai blast onto Naruto's chest. Naruto was only able to block the Kai blast to reduce the force of the impact. Finally, the quick exchange of hits was over. Kara was sent flying due to Naruto's elbow, while Naruto was sent skidding due to Kara's Kai blast. While Kara had a few scratches and bruises, she looked fine otherwise. Naruto was fine as well besides a few scratches and even fewer bruises. So far, Naruto had been able to keep up. He didn't know the max power level of the opponent in front of him. While he could sense her power level, it wasn't her max. It was more of her base form power level. From what he could sense, her base form power level was 29,000, while his was 34,000. Naruto's base power level was his father's max power level. His father was even proud of it. It seems that training every day without taking a day to rest proved useful. Also, the boost he felt from using the Kaioken also helped. As Naruto focused his thoughts, he noticed that Kara's power level was increasing. So Naruto, are you ready to take this battle up a notch? Kara smirked. Gladly, responded Naruto. Kara started to increase her own power level, and Naruto quickly followed. The ground was shaking and many rocks were floating into the air. Naruto's black aura contrasted Kara's white aura. Kara was the first one to finish power up and smiled. My own power level is now 44,000. How do you, a third-rate Saiyan, hope to compare to me? Asked Kara with a cocky smirk. Naruto's power level was beginning to slow down and stop. With a sudden shout, Naruto exploded with his black eye expanding outwards. Kara simply stared in shock at her opponent. What happened? Cat got your tongue? Asked Naruto with a smirk. Kara's scouter had read Naruto's power level as 65,000. It seemed impossible for Kara. How could the son of a low-class Aeon be so powerful? It was insanity, completely ludicrous. H how did you get so strong? Training and determination. Experience also helps, replied Naruto, chuckling. No, I refuse to believe it. You cannot be stronger than my family, the royal family of the Saiyan race. You don't deserve this power. Yelled Kara as she rushed Naruto. Your arrogance will be your downfall, whispered Naruto softly with his eyes closed. Naruto disappeared and instantly reappeared in front of Kara. He delivered a kick to the side of her head which sent her soaring through the air. He followed up with a kick to her back and a Kai blast to her flying form. Naruto didn't expect Kara to appear beside him so quickly, he noted that she could quickly recover from whatever he threw at her. She punched Naruto's jaw and delivered a knee to his stomach. This managed to make Naruto spit blood from the impact and was sent flying. He landed on his feet and prepared for Kara's incoming assault. The female Saiyan baited Naruto into throwing a punch at her face by acting like she was going to throw a sloppy punch to his jaw. She smirked and quickly ducked underneath Naruto's punch. Naruto was surprised at Kara ducking and didn't expect the foot that connected with his chin. 
Kara had leaned back and delivered a kick to Naruto's chin and another kick to his chest. Naruto recovered while in mid-air, but didn't expect the 20 Kai blasts sent his way. He had managed to dodge around 11 of them, but 9 of the Kai blasts had made contact with his body. Kara had flown up in the air and prepared her own signature technique. Take this, Kijikaioku no Kari, Ultimate Fury. Kara brought both of her hands up over her head and gathered a large Kai blast within her hands. She suddenly launched the Kai blast towards Naruto's location, which was followed up by 30 Kai blasts. The finish of her technique, she cupped her hands close to her waist and launched a large Kai beam towards the large dome of energy that she believed consumed Naruto. The Kai beam made contact with the dome of energy and exploded upon impact. Kara had developed many techniques under her uncle's teachings. The Kikaioku no Akari was one of her many techniques that she had personally created. She had much stronger techniques, but they required more concentration, and she needed a quick technique to use so that Naruto wouldn't be able to recover in time. The Kikaioku no Akari was a great way to deliver a barrage of Kai blasts and inflict a large amount of damage to an enemy in a short amount of time. She just hoped that she was able to finish of Naruto with the Kikaioku no Akari. Kara was lightly panting and began to smirk sadistically. Poor, pathetic, low class Aeon. He wouldn't have lost his miserable life if only he pledged his loyalty to us. Oh well, what a disgrace. Kara turned her back on Naruto's last location and was planning on heading to spectator uncle, Vegeta, in his battle against Kakarot. Before Kara could launch off and fly towards her uncle, she suddenly coughed up blood and fell to her knees. She was clutching her stomach and wondered why she was in so much pain. Blood was pouring down the sides of her lips. Kara looked up to see a motionless Naruto standing over her. Naruto's outfit was singed. Naruto's guy was tattered and his pants had a few holes. His undershirt was slightly ripped and singed but otherwise looked fine. His tail was wrapped around his waist. Naruto simply stared at Kara and shook his head. Your arrogance is overwhelming, did you honestly turn your back on an enemy? How arrogant do you have to be to let an opponent attack you while your guard is down? H how? I attacked you with a barrage of cough Kai blasts. You should be dead. At the very least cough my scouter should have recognized your power level. That's where you're wrong, in case you forgot, I can suppress my power level to an insignificant amount if I want to. Of course, how could I forget? I was foolish to believe he was dead with just the Kikaioku no Kari. Damn it, I can't let this low class Saiyan beat me. I'm a proud elite Saiyan warrior, thought Kara. Still, this doesn't explain how you escaped my last attack. What did you cough do? Asked Kara, as she continuously coughed up blood. I'll admit it, your Kai blasts definitely pack a punch. However, after you announced your attack, that gave me enough time to recover and think of a plan. Naruto began to reach into his ruined pants pocket and pulled out a capsule with the Capsule Corporation logo. Naruto redirected his attention back to Kara. When you launched your first large Kai blast, I let it get as close to me as I could. Once it was within a reasonable range, I launched my own Kai blast against yours. I got the desired effect of causing an explosion. I was able to evade the majority of the explosion, but I was slightly singed. I just let you continue on your barrage to a dome of energy, like an idiot. Kara was seething at this point. How was she, an elite, outsmarted by a low-ranking Saiyan? It was a blow to her pride and an embarrassment to her elite status. Kara's vision was starting to become blurry. She realized that she would be unconscious soon if she didn't heal her internal wounds. Naruto clicked the capsule in his hand and a small-looking bean appeared within his palm. This is a senzu bean, it'll completely heal you up as good as new. I think you should eat this, it'll help you recover quicker. Good thing I managed to keep the senzu bean on me. I need to remember to tell Bulma I owe her one. Flashback. It had been one day after contacting Master Rashi that Naruto remembered something. Hey King Kai, can I contact somebody on Earth? Asked Naruto. Of course, but who is it? Naruto began to walk towards King Kai and put his hand on King Kai's back. Her name is Bulma Briefs. Okay, give me a second. Capsule Corporation. Bulma Briefs could be seen working on a project. She was currently working on Raditz's scouter that she was allowed to keep. The scouter used technology that fascinated her, she was determined to understand the technology used. As Bulma continued to work on the scouter in her lab, she suddenly heard a voice. Bulma, hey Bulma. Can you hear me? A-H-H-H. Bulma fell backwards out of her chair. Who's talking? Asked Bulma as she looked back and forth frantically. Whoa, calm down. It's just me, Naruto. Goku-san. Naruto where are you? I'm currently speaking to you through King Kai. Who's King Kai? I know it sounds confusing, but I'll explain later. Anyway, can you please do something for me? Um, yes yeah, sure. What is it? Asked Bulma cautiously. 
I know somebody's going to have senzu beans on the battlefield, but I wanted to ask if you could put a senzu bean in a capsule so I can have a backup plan in case I need it. Alright, I guess I can try, said Bulma with uncertainty. Naruto knew that Bulma was on the fence, so he decided to play to her pride. It's alright Bulma, you don't have to do this. I know that this is probably too tough for you. Too tough nothing is too tough for Bulma briefs. Yelled Bulma, defending her pride. Well I guess that you can do it, can you? This might be a challenge for me, but it's nothing I can't handle. Consider it done. Thanks Bulma, you're the best. I'll stop by the Capsule Corporation compound to pick it up then when I return to Earth. Bulma just nodded in response. It looked like she would have to get a senzu bean and then convert it into a capsule. She should have thought this through. The contact between Bulma and Naruto slowly faded and then disconnected. Wasn't that a little unfair Naruto? You clearly played to her pride, said King Kai as he turned towards Naruto. Trust me King Kai, I didn't want to do it. However, I'll pay her back and repay the favor. Don't worry about it, responded Naruto with a smile. If you say so, said King Kai. Naruto wondered if an extra senzu bean would help him in the fight against the Saiyans. He was better safe than sorry. Flashback end. Naruto stared at Kara as she was deep in thought. The Saiyan is giving me. Mercy. He dare give me mercy, as if I needed. This shows that he really is weak. Such a disgrace to the Saiyan race, thought Kara angrily. How do I know this weird looking bean isn't poisoned or tampered in any way? Asked Kara with a threatening glare. You'll just have to believe me, I don't believe in killing opponents if I can help it, responded Naruto. Ha, ah, really? You say that but you killed Nappa. How do you explain that? Asked Kara with a cocky smirk, as if she had solved the mystery known as Naruto. Your friend had clearly intended to kill my younger brother. If I hadn't killed him, he would have caused more destruction and chaos for others. He needed to be stopped and sadly, it had to be done by me, said Naruto with genuine remorse. Kara could understand the logic in the Saiyan's words. She knows that Nappa would continue to cause destruction if he had lived longer. Yet, she was also confused on why Naruto was remorseful of killing Nappa. Did he not take joy in being victorious over an opponent? Why are you remorseful? Asked Kara with a hint of genuine curiosity. Because, even though I had killed Nappa with my intentions to protect Gohan, I had still taken a life. Life is precious, it shouldn't be taken as if it doesn't matter. Who deserves to decide who lives and who doesn't? That's easy, the strong will live and the weak will die. It's as simple as that, smirked Kara. You honestly believe in that? Of course. So should I kill you since I'm clearly superior over you in your current condition? This caught Kara off guard. It was true, she was in a vulnerable state due to her carelessness. What stopped Naruto from taking her life? He had proven that he could do if before, when he had taken the life of Nappa. She didn't know what to say. Exactly, you don't know. You say the weak die and the strong live, but I disagree. In case you're worried, I won't kill you. I don't kill for fun or sport, only when ultimately necessary. Naruto began to walk closer to Kara's slumped form. He walked directly in front of Kara and brought the senzu bean towards Kara's face. Why are you sparing me? What makes me different from Nappa? Who's to say that I won't just cause more pain and destruction after I heal? Asked Kara. Because, I sense that you want. Unlike Nappa, I see that you can change and become a better person. You have potential to become something amazing. And if I continue to cause mayhem? Then I'll just have to stop you, just like I did now, smiled Naruto. Kara contemplated on Naruto's words. To her, pride and status was everything to her. She was raised on these beliefs. To change her views on these beliefs is unthinkable for her. However, she would think about Naruto's words later. Naruto held out his hand with the senzu bean sitting on his palm. Here, take this. Kara looked at the senzu bean and smiled. You're a fool for giving mercy. Kara's wrapped tail suddenly sprang forward and gripped Naruto's wrist. The tail squeezed tightly. Now, who's caught off guard now? Asked Kara as she smirked. Kara fully intended to pull Naruto forward and punch him with all her remaining strength in one punch. However, when Kara pulled on Naruto's wrist, he didn't even budge an inch. It was as if he was a stone wall. Naruto sighed and shook his head. Naruto brought his other hand and tightly gripped Kara's tail. Kara went wide-eyed at seeing her tail being forcefully unwrapped from Naruto's wrist. I hope you change Kara, remember this as a lesson to reevaluate your morals. Don't let your arrogance consume you, you're stronger than that. Kara then lurched forward and her eyes rolled backwards into her head. Naruto had delivered a quick swift chop to the back of Kara's neck which knocked her out. Naruto sighed and shook his head. He gently placed her down onto the ground and brought the senzu bean to Kara's mouth. Okay come on, we gotta make sure you're fine. Naruto made Kara thoroughly chew the senzu bean and forcibly swallow it as well. Kara's injuries instantly went away as the senzu bean's healing properties kicked in. 
Naruto stood up and looked towards the direction of his father. Naruto looked at Kara one last time and flew towards his father. He intended to help his dad defeat the enemy Saiyan. He just hoped that he could make it before anything drastic happened. But Goku and Vegeta. I guess you're not so bad in a battle Kakarot, but you're still nowhere near my level and skill, said Vegeta, lightly panting. Vegeta wasn't in good shape, he had clearly taken a few strong blows from Goku. His right shoulder pad was broken off and his armor was scratched in random places. His scouter had already been destroyed from the battle. He had holes in his pants and shirt. He also had a slight trickle of blood coming from his lips. Goku wasn't exactly in perfect condition either. His guy was torn and tattered. His pants were basically rags. Scratches and bruises were littered across his arms and legs. His undershirt was also tattered. Blood was pouring from his lips as he was panting. Both Saiyans were exhausted from their battle. However, this didn't matter to either Saiyan as their blood demanded for battle and nothing would come stop them. Goku and Vegeta suddenly heard a loud shout. Hey dad. I'm here to help. Shouted Naruto as he flew towards his father. Vegeta was stunned, why was Kara's opponent in front of him with no sign of Kara? He had clearly seen his niece use the Kakaioku no Akari and assumed that she was battling the son of Kakarot. Did the low class Saiyan possibly beat his niece? Naruto. When did you get here? Asked Goku surprised. I got here a while ago, but I just finished fighting the female Saiyan, replied Naruto. What happened to her? Asked Goku in confusion. I managed to catch her off guard and deliver a strong blow. She should be out for a while. Don't worry dad, I didn't kill her, responded Naruto as he had seen his dad give him a demanding look. Oh, said Goku. Vegeta couldn't believe it, his niece, his powerful nice, was bested by a runt of a Saiyan. He couldn't believe it, it was surreal. Suddenly, he felt pure anger. He was angered at the fact that his niece was defeated by Kakarot's son. He was determined to advance his nice's training after this. Using his control remote, he made Kara's space pod gather Kara and take her towards a safe location. Thankfully, Kara's pod was able to locate her due to Kara's scouter. The scouter was able to give a location so that the pod could locate Kara and take her somewhere safe. After confirming that his niece would be taken somewhere safe, Vegeta decided to finish off Kakarot and his planet. His rage was at a boiling point. He would show these insignificant bugs to not defy the royal family of the Saiyan race. So Kakarot, it seems that you need the help of your son to win your battle, how pathetic. Prepare to die Kakarot. Shouted Vegeta as he sprung into the air. Time to die Kakarot. Yelled Vegeta as he prepared to launch a Kai attack. Vegeta brought both of his hands backwards, with one palm open and the other hand holding his open palm. A purple looking Kai began to develop in Vegeta's hands. Goku tried to move his body and grunted. He underestimated the amount of damage his body received. However, he wasn't going to let Vegeta destroy his planet. With immense amount of determination, Goku prepared to fight back. Knowing that his body couldn't move, much less attack, Goku decided to use the Kaioken. Kaioken. Goku felt the strain and stress that his body was under. He needed to win this battle for the sake of everyone. Ha. Me. Ha. Me. Say goodbye Kakarot. Naruto had realized that his father didn't want any outside interference within the fight. Naruto wanted to help his father, but didn't want to damage his father's pride. While not always shown, Naruto knew his father had a hidden sense of pride. Hoping that his father could win the fight, Naruto jumped backwards and headed for shelter. Naruto knew this Kai battle would have destructive results. Alec gun. Ha. Both Kai beams collided with each other in the air. Vegeta was pouring his energy into his attack while Goku tried to stand his ground. Goku knew if the situation continued, he would lose. Not only did Vegeta have a higher power level, Goku was in worse shape than Vegeta. Deciding to step it up, Goku increased the Kaioken. Kaioken times 3. Goku's Kamehameha increased in Kai and managed to push back Vegeta's Gallic gun. However, Vegeta wasn't letting up on his attack. Even though Goku managed to push back Vegeta's attack, Vegeta was able to slowly regain power. Goku was starting to worry. If the Kaioken times 3 didn't work, what would? If he stopped his Kamehameha, everybody would die. Knowing there was one thing left, Goku stepped it up once more. Kaioken. Vegeta had a started look, what was Kakarot planning? Times fur. Goku's Kamehameha quickly gained so much power. It easily cut through Vegeta's Gallic gun and hit Vegeta directly. Ah! Shouted Vegeta as he was taken away by the Kamehameha. Goku hunched forwards and began to heavily pant. Goku was so tired and exhausted. Goku fell backwards, onto his back, and smiled. Naruto realized that the Kai battle was over and walked towards his father. Naruto looked around and was amazed at the damage caused by his father's battle. Chunks of earth were missing, mountains were destroyed, and large craters were littered across the battlefield. 
Naruto even saw large gashes on the ground, most likely caused by Kai blasts. Hey dad, you did amazing. Said Naruto in awe as he slowly walked closer towards Goku. Haha, <laughs> laughed Goku in happiness. Even though Naruto was growing up, he could still be impressed and react like a small child at times. It was these moments that Goku cherished. Naruto sat down by his father and joined him in laughter. He was so happy that the Saiyans wouldn't bother him and his family anymore. However, he would be proven wrong. But Vegeta. Ah. Yelled Vegeta as he was carried by Goku's Kai Beam. Slowly, Vegeta turned his body and let the Kai Beam fly by him. Vegeta was livid. He was fuming in anger. How dare Kakarot, an insignificant third-rate Saiyan, beat him. As Vegeta was lost in his anger, he didn't realize somebody appear beside him. Uncle, it seems that those idiotic third-class trash have sullen our status. Shall we surprise them? Asked Kar with a smirk. Vegeta looked at his niece and viewed her armor. Vegeta didn't see the reason for a crimson and black color style for her armor, but he never did have a huge problem with it. He just played it off as a personal interest for his niece. Besides a small broken piece of armor in the middle of her stomach, Kara looked fine. Kara bowed her head and began to speak. Forgive me uncle, I was careless and let my guard down. That is when my opponent took advantage of the situation and managed to land a strong blow to my stomach. He then proceeded to knock me out completely and I woke up in my space spot. Vegeta thought about what his niece had said. Well it was true she shouldn't have let her guard down, impaled in comparison to his worry of her. Bring your head up Kara, spoke Vegeta. Kara looked up at her uncle. I agree that you were careless, however, learn from it and don't let it happen again. Kara smiled and nodded. Now, why do you seem perfectly fine? Kara proceeded to tell her uncle about the Senzu bean and its supposed healing property. I assume you consumed the Senzu bean? Asked Vegeta. I didn't consume the Senzu bean while I was awake, I assume the Saiyan force fed me the Senzu bean while I was unconscious. I see, said Vegeta. Uncle, thank you. This had caught Vegeta off guard. Why was his niece thanking him? What are you thanking me for Kara? For everything. You raised me with love, granted it was tough love, but love nonetheless. Even in your battle with Kakarot, you still thought of me and sent the space spot for me. I've even thought of you as my father, uncle. Thank you for everything, said Kara, genuinely. Vegeta didn't realize why his niece had suddenly decided to say this. Vegeta hadn't exactly been very familiar with the word love as he was raised on discipline. However, Vegeta did consider Kara as his daughter and did indeed love her. Yet, he didn't know exactly how to say this. I've considered you as my daughter before Takara. You represent the perfect Saiyan. Prideful, skillful, and no mercy. Don't consider your defeat at the hands of Kakarot's son shameful. You just made a mistake, we all do. Just learn from it and continue to represent the warrior you are. Kara nodded at her uncle's words and smiled. Those words meant a lot to her, it showed that her uncle truly did care for her. Kara had decided to speak about this now because her defeat to Naruto had opened her eyes. Kara. Yes uncle. What did you mean when you said that we should surprise Kakarot and his son? Kara suddenly remembered the strategy that she had created once she woke up in the space pod. I say we transform into our Azeru forms and destroy this planet. Once we hit this planet's core, we leave this planet and go to Namek. I know that we came here for the Dragon Balls to use for our own purposes, but I remembered that there were Dragon Balls on planet Namek as well. After destroying this planet, we can leave for Namek and use those Dragon Balls. Vegeta smirked and nodded his head. He gained a sense of pride for his niece. This showed the strategic mind of his niece and her ability to come up with plan in such a short time. He decided to go through with the plan and transform into their Azera forms. This planet would be destroyed. Both Kara and Vegeta flew upwards into the sky. They would use this planet's moon and cause destruction beyond repair. Thankfully, Vegeta had taught Kara how to control the Azera form. This would be exciting. As Vegeta and Kara left, Piccolo let out a sigh. He had regained consciousness as he was being carried to safety. After finding out that Goku and Naruto stayed behind to fight the Saiyans, he decided to go back and help. As he traveled towards Goku and Naruto, he sensed two power levels within the sky. Realizing the power levels were from the Saiyans, he decided to eavesdrop and overhear their conversation. He had heard the entire conversation as he stayed hidden. Piccolo was stunned, he didn't believe that these Saiyans were going to destroy the Earth. He had to give this information to Goku and Naruto. But Naruto and Goku. All right, up we go, said Naruto as he helped his father up. Thanks son, I can barely move my body, laughed Goku. Naruto. Goku. Those Saiyans are going to destroy Earth. We need to stop them. Piccolo. What do you mean? Why are you here? Questioned Goku in confusion. No time to explain. Just know that the Saiyans plan to transform into something called Azeru. Azeru? Asked Naruto. 
I don't know what it is, but apparently they need the Earth's moon to help themselves transform, said Piccolo. Here, I'll take Goku somewhere safe, said Piccolo as he brought Goku's arm over his neck. I'm not out yet. I can still fight, protested Goku as he tried to move. No, you're done for today. You can barely move and the Kaioken just exhausted your body further. Just rest and we'll take care of it dad, said Naruto. No, I can still go on. Just let M. Goku was suddenly knocked out by Piccolo. A quick chop to the back of his neck easily knocked Goku unconscious. Thanks Piccolo. Dad can be stubborn sometimes. Don't mention it. I'll be back as soon as Goku is taken somewhere safe. Naruto nodded in response. Piccolo grabbed Goku's body and took off in the distance. Suddenly, two loud thuds were heard. Turning towards the noise, Naruto noticed a chaotic sight. Two tall apes were currently standing next to each other. Their tails were swishing behind them. W what is that? Asked Naruto in alarm. A loud booming voice began to speak. We are elites, royalty, and superior to you in every way. Behold our Azera forms. Spoke Vegeta. Thanks to your moon and our tails, we have transformed into our Azera forms. Our power has been increased tenfold. You stand no chance now, said Kara in her Azera form. Noticing that the armor also increased with the Saiyans, Naruto could tell which ape was Kara and Vegeta. The color style of Kara's armor helped distinct the two Saiyans. I need to detach their tails somehow. They clearly need two factors to transform, a moon and their tails. Since they've already transformed, their tails is my only shot at taking them down, thought Naruto seriously. Alright. Let's go. Shouted Naruto as he powered up. He instantly decided to activate the Kaioken if he was to stand any chance against the behemoths against him. Kaioken times four. Vegeta smirked tauntingly against the half Saiyan. You still defy your inevitable fate. So be it. You and your father will perish along with this planet. Not if I have anything to say about it, said Naruto. Very well, enjoy your last moments before you die. But that said, Vegeta and Kara rushed Naruto. This surprised Naruto since Kara and Vegeta were moving rather quickly for their large size. Preparing for the destructive battle, Naruto braced himself. I don't know if I can win, but I can't give up. I can't let everyone down. Let's go. Thought Naruto with reassured confidence. As the two forces collided, a humongous crater was formed. Vegeta's fist had caused a powerful shockwave as it had connected with Naruto. After recovering from the hit, Naruto knew he had to go all out from the beginning. Ioken times 5. There was no holding back now. On the battlefield. Naruto was currently getting his ass handed to him, it wasn't even a fight. A one-sided battle would be an accurate description of what was going on. The Kaioken is an amazing technique, but right now it might as well have not made a difference. Even though Naruto had his power multiplied by 5, the Saiyans had their power multiplied by 10. He just couldn't stand a chance against two Saiyans with their power so great. Right now, Naruto stood on top of a rock formation while he stared at his two opponents. Naruto's guy might as well have fallen off because there was barely anything left of it. Only his undershirt remained. His pants and boots were littered with holes and scratches. As he stared at his enemies, Naruto wondered what he could do. He was panting and was bleeding from his head. There was blood pouring down the sides of his lips as well. He had tried to make the two Saiyans fight each other by flying in between the two, but they had better teamwork than he expected. There were no blind spots when the two Saiyans worked together. It seemed impossible to win, what could he do? He almost managed to slash Kara's tail of with a Kai Blast, but he had been struck with an unexpected Kai Blast from Vegeta's mouth. Now he knew that the Azera form allowed both Kara and Vegeta with the ability to shoot Kai from their mouths. Then, in the corner of his eye, Naruto spotted something. Piccolo was returning from placing his father in a safe location. Suddenly, Naruto hatched an idea that could possibly worked. He just hoped that it would. Knowing that the Saiyans had to not see Piccolo for his plan to work, Naruto launched a large Kai Blast straight to the ground. An explosion occurred and dust shot up into the air. This temporarily gave Naruto the time to grab Piccolo and head into a nearby cave. This distraction also temporarily blinded Kara and Vegeta. Naruto landed into the cave with Piccolo and deactivated his Kaioken. Piccolo, I need you to listen to me. We don't have much time before they find us, but I have a plan. Piccolo was confused on why he was suddenly taken into a cave. With caution Piccolo asked his question. Fine, what is it? How long does your Makinkumsap, special beam cannon, take to charge? Around 1 to 2 minutes, why? How long would it take for you to charge all of your Kai, and I mean all, into your Makinkumsap? If I were to use all of my Kai into the attack, 2 minutes. Great, so now I know how long I need to defend. So this is my plan. I'll distract the Saiyans while you stay here and charge up your attack. When you're ready, aim for Kara's tail. I predict that Vegeta will see you and try to attack you. 
Be sure to be as stealthy as possible, we don't need Kara spotting you before you can attack. And this is your plan? Asked Piccolo, annoyed. No, let me finish. So when you attack I'll Naruto was suddenly cut off from a loud thud that shook the ground. Where are you Naruto? Don't tell me you ran away. Mocked Kara. It seems as if he did run, what a pity. Oh well, let's destroy this planet and leave for Namek. Of course uncle, responded Kara. Both Saiyans practically leaked arrogance. Crap, we got to hurry. Spoke Naruto quickly. Okay, so Vegeta will try to attack you, and I'll make sure that doesn't happen. Just make sure that your attack removes Kara's tail. If that happens, we'll have a better chance at winning. Piccolo nodded and agreed with the plan. He had to make sure nothing went wrong, they couldn't afford to make any mistake. As Naruto turned to leave the cave, Piccolo spoke to him. Hey Naruto. Naruto turned to face Piccolo. Make sure you don't die out there kid. Besides Gohan, you're the only other person to see me without fear or disgust. Now go out there and show them what you're made of. Naruto was surprised by Piccolo's words. He didn't know that he had an impact on Piccolo at all. Quickly nodding and smiling, Naruto flew out of the cave. Piccolo readied himself and prepared his Makinkumsap. He had a job to do and he wouldn't fail, no matter what. On the battlefield. As Kara and Vegeta prepared to destroy the earth, Naruto suddenly appeared before them. Sorry I was gone, I just had to take a break from seeing your ugly form, mocked Naruto. So the coward has returned. At least we can have some more fun before we kill you and everyone on this mud ball of a planet, spoke Vegeta with arrogance. Vegeta and Kara prepared to finish this battle and destroy the planet. Naruto calmed himself and used his technique once more. Ioken times 5. With all that settled, the battle between both forces resumed. With Gohan. We have to go back Krillin. My dad and brother are fighting over there. Even Mr. Piccolo went back to fight, we can't just give up, said Gohan. I hear you Gohan, but those Saiyans are absolute monsters. Have you seen what they can do? I would prefer to live another day, thank you very much, said Krillin in retort. Krillin had woken up while being carried by Chiatsu and flew beside Gohan and Chiatsu. Whatever, you can do what you want, but I'm going back to help. Hey Chiatsu, can you carry Tien back to the Kame house for me? Of course, replied Chiatsu. Gohan gently lifted Tien onto Chiatsu. And prepared to head towards the battlefield. I'll see you guys later, I'm going to help my family. But that said Gohan soared through the sky with the intent on helping his father and brother. Damn it. Now I have to go back to those monsters. But the huge Zai, Krillin prepared to go along with Gohan. Take care Chiatsu, let's hope we live. Krillin launched into the sky to aid Gohan, Naruto, Piccolo, and Goku in the battle against the Saiyans. Chiatsu looked at Krillin's retreating form and hoped the best for them. Please stay safe guys, don't give up. Hayatsu proceeded to carry Tien to safety. With Naruto and the Saiyans. With a loud crash, Naruto landed in the side of a mountain and created a small crater. Is that cough all you got? I didn't even feel that one, taunted Naruto. Really? Because your body says another story, replied Vegeta with a smirk. Despite using the Kaioken technique, Naruto was still losing the battle against the Saiyans and had to begrudgingly agree that he was taking a huge amount of damage. I'm lucky that my Kaioken technique hasn't run out considering how long I've been using it, thought Naruto. As if on K Naruto's body suddenly lost its red glow which signified the end of the Kaioken. Damn, my body has taken too much damage. I won't be able to use the Kaioken again, except for one more last use. I'll have to make it my last resort now. Naruto didn't know what to do. On one hand he could activate the Kaioken, but then he would be out of uses for it. On the other hand he had to defend for another minute to get Piccolo to finish charging his Makinkumsat. What was he going to do? Well, it seems our little friend has lost his glow. I've grown tired of this little skirmish, it's time to destroy your planet. But the great jump, Kara and Vegeta simultaneously prepared a huge amount of Kai in their mouth with the intent to destroy the earth in their next attack. Realization suddenly kicked in for Naruto. He had an idea. It was reckless and didn't know the likelihood of it working, but he was willing to try it to save the earth. However, before he could try anything Krillin and Gohan appeared in the sky. Hey. You filthy monkeys leave my brother alone. With a quick shout, Gohan was eager to join the battle. By suddenly launching himself into the battle, everybody was taken off guard. But the attention momentarily distracted, both Kara and Vegeta deactivated their attack and landed on the ground with a thud. So the little weakling has to help his weak brother, how touching, Vegeta said with an intense amount of sarcasm. With his Kai surrounding him, Gohan launched towards Vegeta. Right before Vegeta could punch him, a sudden yell gathered everybody's attention. Solar Flare. P-H-H-H-H. Both Vegeta and Kara had to cover their eyes as the Solar Flare had temporarily blinded them. Do it now Piccolo. Yelled Krillin as he had appeared moments earlier. 
Makinkum Satam. Hara turned just to barely make out a large Kai beam aimed at her tail. With a quick jump, she swiftly dodged the attack. However, she didn't expect another attack come from behind her. Masenko. Noticing the small Saiyan child attacking her back, Kara didn't have time to block. Thankfully, Vegeta appeared just in time to deflect the attack. However, there was no breathing room just yet. Destructo Disc. Hatching both Vegeta and Kara off guard was certainly not an easy feat. So when Krillin launched his attack, he couldn't help but smirk at outsmarting both of these Saiyans. After they've threatened his planet and hurt his friends, dealing damage to them felt great. Hara instantly recognized the attack from when it was used on Nappa, but even though she could see the attack coming, she couldn't effectively dodge while in midair. Once the disc came close to Kara, it reached its target. However it only slightly cut her backside as she moved her tail out of the way. Before the disc could continue on its way through Kara's body, Vegeta launched a Kai blast from his mouth at the disc and destroyed it instantly. Krillin lost his smirk. But the great thud, Kara finally landed on solid earth. Well, at least we tried our plan Mr. Piccolo, said Gohin with a tired smile. While traveling towards the battle, Gohin sensed Piccolo in a cave charging Kai and spoke with him and developed this new plan. Don't sweat a kid, we tried our best, said Piccolo as he didn't know what to do now. Damn, so it looks like I'll have to go with my backup plan. I just have to hope it doesn't go wrong. But his thoughts decided, Naruto launched straight up into the sky. I've had enough. Let's finally destroy this useless planet. Shouted Vegeta. I agree uncle. Let's turn this good-for-nothing planet into smithereens. Yelled Kara. As both Saiyan monkeys gathered a large amount of Kai in each of their mouths, the earthlings slowly began losing hope. So this is it guys. At least we put up a fight said Krillin with a tired smile. What do we do now? asked Gohin intently. God I don't know Gohin, I just don't know. Answered Piccolo honestly. However, at the very last moment before total destruction, a miracle happened. A third Saiyan monkey had appeared, but this time, it was on Earth's side. Naruto landed with a loud thud and came crashing down to Earth. He quickly landed between both Saiyan monkeys and delivered a hard uppercut to both of them. Once delivered, the large Kai blast shot up into the sky and were thankfully redirected thanks to Naruto. Ag. Is that who I think it is? Asked Krillin terrified. It's my brother guys. He's becoming big and strong now. Cheered Gohin with childlike happiness. The question is though, can he control that form? Thought Piccolo. But the grunt Vegeta turned to look at his transformed opponent, only to receive a teeth-shattering punch to his jaw. As he was sent flying, Naruto instinctually followed his prey. However, Vegeta quickly landed on his feet and met his enemy face on. Leave my uncle alone. But that said, Kara prepared to launch after Naruto. Kara use your brain. Instead of worrying about me, prepare a Kai blast with enough power to blow this planet. That'll be enough power to kill everything on this planet and end these weaklings. Blow this planet to debris. But yes uncle, with her orders given, Kara prepared to charge enough Kai to finally end this battle. While this conversation was going on, Vegeta had been holding off Naruto in a full-body stalemate. Neither side could overpower the other with sheer strength. That was until the Earthlings decided to get involved. Get away from my brother you evil man! Shouted Gohin. Masenko. Normally Vegeta would just take the Kai Blast as it didn't seem like much, but this blast was fully powered and would penetrate his armor if contact was made. Vegeta quickly headbutted Naruto and jumped to the side. Oh no you don't. This time you won't be able to dodge. Vegeta turned around only to see a bald monk with his hands on his forehead. Solar flare. Ag. This technique again. Shouted Vegeta as he held his eyes in pain. Because of this, he didn't see Naruto sprinting towards him and eventually punch him in the head, which would result in him landing on his back. With Naruto keeping one foot on his chest and still slightly blinded, Vegeta was for once, completely vulnerable. Naruto shouted in primal victory and brought both fists together above his head to finish his opponent. Coincidentally, this is when Kara had just finished gathering her planet-busting Kai Blast. Despite her uncle's earlier orders, noticing that her uncle may die in a matter of seconds, Kara decided to instead launch her attack at Naruto, instead of the planet last second. This however, was what Piccolo was depending on. With every ounce of strength left in his body, Piccolo directed it in one last kick to the back of Kara's head. This of course slightly changed the course of the Kai Blast, which was now on course towards Vegeta's laying body. Noticing the danger quickly approaching, Naruto jumped off Vegeta with a snarl. Yet, this didn't give Vegeta enough time to dodge and received the full attack to his right side. But the loud, resounding boom, an enormous smoke cloud arose with a 30-foot crater being created. As the dust settled, Vegeta could be seen laying down, in his human form, unconscious. Uncle. 
Hara, however, did not have time to worry about Vegeta because Naruto had set his sights on her. What nobody noticed was that while in his Azera form, Naruto's power level had been slowly increasing. The longer he fought, the greater his power grew. Nobody noticed because the increase in power was small at first, but Naruto's power had increased by around 15,000 since his transformation began. This would also explain why when Naruto rushed Kara and easily knocked her down with a shoulder rush, she was visually confused. Ah. Naruto brought both fists above his head and began his assault on Kara. He towered over Kara's fallen form and began pummeling her into the ground, fist by fist. After each fist made contact, a piece of Kara's armor would crack, break, or simply snap off. After a few hits, Kara's entire chest armor was cracked in many places. Each fist smashed into Kara's abdomen and slowly went up to her face. Of course, Kara tried to launch a Kai blast into Naruto's face, and she actually did make contact, but it simply didn't phase Naruto at all. Uh. Mr. Piccolo is big brother taking this too far. Asked a concerned Gohan. In all honesty Gohan, Naruto's just letting out everybody's frustration. Krillin responded. Krillin. That's not nice to say. What? But it's true. Quiet, it looks like Naruto's tirade is about to be over, said Piccolo. Kara had been pummeled so severely that she had a slow trickle of blood coming down the sides of her mouth. Naruto quickly put his humongous foot on Kara's stomach. Kara was slowly fading out of consciousness as she saw Naruto momentarily stop his assault when he aimed his mouth towards the sky. He was gathering an enormous amount of Kai. Knowing she wouldn't wake up from that attack, Kara struggled as if her life depended on it, cause it probably did. Kara pounded and slammed her fists on Naruto's chest, but it didn't even make him budge. She struggled and tried moving her body, but Naruto's foot was keeping her in place too well for her to move her body. Finally, Naruto had prepared his Kai blast. He took off his foot from Kara's stomach and was ready to end his opponent. He aimed it straight at Kara's face, at point-blank range, and fired it off in one massive ball of Kai. A large dun of Kai Wad erected instantly and surrounded both Saiyans. Krillin, Gohan, and Piccolo all had to cover their eyes from the intensity of the blast and the many powerful shockwaves that followed. Dust flew up into the air and took around two minutes for it to settle. Once it did, everybody was able to witness the destruction it had caused. The attack caused a 70-foot crater with it being 20 feet deep. At the very center of the crater was Kara's unconscious human Saiyan form with her armor and clothes tattered. Naruto, still in his Azera form, yelled into the sky as he claimed another victory. Everything would have been fine for the Earthlings, but there was one problem. Naruto was still an uncontrollable ape. After defeating his enemy, Naruto looked around for another fight and set his sights on Piccolo, Gohan, and Krillin. Naruto rushed the Z fighters and before they could react, Piccolo was slammed into a nearby mountain. He then proceeded to slam both hands on top of Krillin's body, which knocked him into the stone floor. Naruto then brought his fist back and prepared to strike down Gohan. As the fist was soaring through the air, Naruto suddenly received flashes of memories of his little brother. Memories of holding Gohan as a baby, training with his little brother, and even memories of laughing with his family at the kitchen table. All of these memories helped Naruto fight his primal instincts, he remembered who he was. Gohan couldn't believe what was about to happen, he just closed his eyes and waited for the punch. However, it never came. Go. Han. BBB Big Brother. B did I do this? Naruto looked around and sensed the destruction across the battlefield. Craters littered the ground along with Earthlings and Saiyan. He looked downwards and saw Krillin and looked to the side to see Piccolo lodged in the side of a mountain. Gently bending down, Naruto picked up Krillin and Piccolo and set them atop a mountain. Both Krillin and Piccolo stood up along with Gohan standing nearby. About time Naruto, I was worried we were goners for a second there haha. Laughed Krillin weakly. Are those Saiyans gone? Well, after giving them a beat down, you definitely finished both of them off, so yeah. Cheered Krillin happily. Tsuo. How do I transform back to normal? My best guess is that you just calm yourself down enough to regain your senses, stated Piccolo wisely. After a few moments, Naruto concentrated immensely and slowly changed back into his human form. Well, looks like I'm back to norm, Naruto collapsed as his eyes rolled to the back of his head. Big brother. Gohan, Piccolo, and Krillin landed next to Naruto and tried to help him up. After zapping some clothes for Naruto, Piccolo picked up Naruto's unconscious form. The rush to get to Earth, constant fighting, being in Kaioken form, transforming into Izeru, taking large blows as Izeru, and transforming back into his human Saiyan form, took its toll on Naruto. The stress throughout the day finally affected Naruto all at once. He'll be alright Gohan, he's just a little tired. Resting should be just fine for him, said Piccolo. Braum. Swish. The Z fighters all looked behind them just to see two Saiyan pods flying through the sky. 
The Jeddah had slowly crawled out of his crater and managed to call his and Kara's Saiyan pods. They're trying to get away. Let's stop them before they flee. Said Krillin as he rushed both weakened Saiyans. Krillin no. They're both weak and down, just let them be. Said Gohan as he pulled on Krillin's guy. BB but they tried to kill us. Multiple times in fact. Trying to kill them now wouldn't make us any better. Please Krillin, just let them go. Pleaded Gohan. Ah ugh, fine, I let them go for now. But just know I'm doing this reluctantly. Thanks Krillin, smiled Gohan. The earthlings all watched as Vegeta put an unconscious car in her pod and slowly crawled into his own. As the pod door was slowly closing on Vegeta, he decided to announce something. Mark my words. We'll be back soon to destroy you and this planet. Both pods slowly rose into the sky and suddenly shot off into the atmosphere. Soon enough, it was out of sight. Piccolo sighed and looked around at the landscape. There was destruction everywhere. Hey guys. Look in the sky. Said Gohan. A yellow, large spacecraft was flying towards the Z fighters. Krillin and Gohan could instantly sense who was in the spacecraft, their friends. Piccolo gently set Naruto down and proceeded to fly into the sky. I have to go for now, I'll be back later to rely some important information. Said Piccolo before he suddenly launched off into one direction. The yellow spacecraft gently landed on the top of the mountain, and a metal ram came out the side of the aircraft. The blur was suddenly seen as soon as the door opened. After a brief pause, everybody could hear what it said next. Where are my babies? By this point, Naruto had sat up but was still severely tired and dizzy. Aikai could be seen looking around, and once her sights were set on Gohan and Naruto, she ran like a lunatic. She slammed into Gohan and Naruto and hugged her sons dearly. She also began to cry tears of relief and joy. After repeatedly kissing the top of her son's heads multiple times, she began to speak. My poor baby boys. I was so worried about both of you. I love you so much, don't make me worry again. You're both getting into your studies again. I'm gonna chew out Goku for this. Aikai had shot statement after statement while she was hugging her children dearly. Gohan and Naruto had sweat drops behind their heads. Hey guys, what happened here? Asked Bulma. Oh boy. Do I have stuff to catch you up on? Said Krillin. Well, let's hear it Krillin. Said Master Rashi. On the spacecraft. The earthlings aboard the spacecraft were all heading to a nearby hospital. They had picked up Goku who was laying down besides his son, Naruto, while they both slept due to exhaustion. Kai Kai was also in the back with them. Kai Kai was simply holding Gohan while constantly running her hand through Naruto's hair. They had found Goku when Gohan had lead them to him by sensing his power level while he was resting inside a cave. So you're telling me that those Saiyans are coming back? Asked a terrified Bulma. Well, according to Vegeta, they're going to be back soon to finish us off, said Krillin with air quotes. Why don't we just wish those guys away with the Dragon Balls? Asked Gohan. We can't do that sadly because the Dragon Balls have to wait a year after using them, so they'll be inactive for a while. However, I don't know if we'll have the luxury to wait a year for those Saiyans to return, explained Bulma. God I have an idea, said Krillin. Well, let's hear it, said Master Rashi. Piccolo was telling me that he overhead the Saiyans talking about a place called Namek that had their own version of Dragon Balls. We could use those Dragon Balls to save Earth from those Saiyans returning. Really? Well that's news to me, said a shocked Rashi. Heads up guys, we're approaching the hospital, said Bulma as she steered the aircraft towards a landing. In the hospital. Both Goku and Naruto were resting in their respective hospital beds. So. Where's Namek at? Asked Bulma, breaking the silence in the room. Perhaps I can help answer that. Everybody turned to see Kami and Mr. Popo atop a flying carpet outside the hospital window. Kami and Mr. Popo both stepped into the room. There is a ship on Earth that already has Namek's coordinates programmed within its system. How did you know we were going to ask about Namek? I didn't, I came to check on Goku, Naruto, Krillin, and Gohan after their battle with the Saiyans. Aikai subconsciously embraced Gohan tighter and slightly moved in front of Naruto. Ah oh, oh, said embarrassed Bulma. It seems Naruto and Goku are the only unconscious ones from this ordeal. After checking on Krillin, Kami began walking towards Gohan, as he did, he encountered Kai Kai blocking him from Gohan and Naruto. I see you're Naruto's mother, please, I mean no harm. I know you're protective of him, but please trust me. Kami said. Kai Kai contemplated her decision and decided to let Kami check on Naruto and Gohan. Fine, but if you hurt them at all, you'll be answering to me, she said with a menacing glare. Kami smiled and nodded. After Kai Kai moved out of the way, Kami checked on Gohan's health and saw that he was completely fine, if not tired. He then appeared beside Naruto's bed and put his hand over his head. After a few moments, he began to speak. Naruto is simply exhausted, however, it seems his power level has increased exponentially due to this battle. 
Ami then appeared besides Goku's bedside and did the same thing as he did for Naruto. After a few moments, Kami had something different to say. Hmm. I mid lie worried for Goku's health. Why? What's wrong? Asked a fanatic Kai Kai. It seems the battle took a greater toll on Goku's body than I originally thought. In a way, his body put itself into a self-induced coma to heal himself. This surprised everyone as nobody though Goku's injuries were this severe. So how long will he be unconscious? I don't know the exact amount of time, but I can confidently say he will take no longer than a month at most to wake up. This put Kai Kai slightly at ease, but she was still worried for her husband. I believe I've accomplished what I came here for. If anybody needs me, you know where to find me. Farewell. Kami stepped onto the carpet with Mr. Popo and was ready to leave. Wait. Where's the ship that can help take us to Namek? Asked Bulma. Oh yes. How could I forget? Laughed Kami. Hop aboard and we shall take you to the ship. Bulma looked around for any participants, but nobody seemed eager to go. With a sigh, Bulma slowly crawled onto the floating carpet and instantly disappeared. At Yunzabit Heights. After checking the spaceship with Mr. Popo and Kami, Bulma learned how the inner workings of the ship worked. She also learned the keyword for the ship to open. Bulma was amazed at the technology the ship was made of. It was decades above Earth's technology. Bulma. Bulma turned to face Kami with a confused expression. I did not want to say this in front of Goku's wife, but I believe if Goku doesn't wake within the month, he may never wake up again. Bulma gasped and put her hand over her mouth in shock. Her friend may never wake up again. His self-induced coma is leaning on a fence. He could either wake up within the month or may never wake at all. Do this information whatever you want, but I believe somebody should know. Before Bulma could respond, Tian, Chaiatsu, and Yamcha suddenly landed in front of them. Mr. Popo. Kami. We've all wanted to know if you could help us further our training and power. The battle with the Saiyans opened our eyes to how weak we are if we don't train hard enough. Will you two please further our training? Asked Tian as all three of them bowed respectively. Dot I have an idea that could benefit everybody, said Kami with a knowing smile. One week later. One day after the battle with the Saiyans, Naruto woke up. He felt rejuvenated and amazing. His power level had skyrocketed in his base form. His new regular form was almost his old max base form. He nearly couldn't believe how much of an increase had happened. One day after Naruto had waken up, Kami had gathered the Z fighters on the lookout to give his idea. Since Kami knew the Earthlings wanted to use the Dragon Balls to wish away the Saiyans, he formed a plan. Bulma, and anybody she chose to go with her, would go to Namek to gather the Namekian Dragon Balls in order to prevent the Saiyans from harming her planet. When Kami had finished speaking and Gohin had taken Kai Kai home, Bulma pulled Naruto's side. Naruto, I have something to tell you. Said Bulma seriously. Yeah sure, what's up? Your father? May never wake up again. WWW what do you mean? Kami said he would wake up within the month. Stuttered Naruto. Bulma then proceeded to tell Naruto what Kami had said and that once the wishes on the Namekian Dragon Balls had been done and they returned to Earth, she thought they could wish Goku awake if they had to. Naruto now understood that waking up his father was incredibly important and he needed to get his wish granted if his father didn't wake up. This had just become a personal quest for himself. After Naruto digested and processed the information, he decided to not tell Gohin in order to spare him from becoming scared. It was also decided that Tian, Yamcha, and Chaiatsu would defend the Earth in the meantime, while the others would go to Namek. The group going to Namek would be Bulma, Krillin, Gohin, and Naruto. The amount of convincing it took for Naruto to let his mother go with Gohin to Namek was immense. The only reason she allowed it was because Krillin and Bulma were going as well. Naruto also promised to do mountains of homework and piles of reading in order to satisfy his mother on his teachings. Gohin had to do the same. While Kami was explaining the plan to the Z fighters, nobody noticed a floating Namekian above them overhearing everything. Came house. Ai Kai had just arrived with Gohin and Naruto in sophisticated clothing. Both brothers were slightly pulling at their collars as it felt a little too stiff for their liking. Oh stop fussing about the clothes, you both look adorable. Said Kai Kai as she smothered her children. Bulma was ready to board the ship with her luggage and Krillin in tow. She had landed the ship on the small island earlier in the day. Bulma had actually added a training room to the ship as a request of Naruto. At first, she didn't think she could add such a thing to the spacecraft. However, while repairing and remodeling the ship slightly with her father, she noticed a large amount of space in the ship that was empty. With her father's help, she managed to add a training section to the ship with an experimental gravity training method, along with the traditional weights. The experimental gravity training factor is something that her company, Capsule Corporation, was working on the gravitational technology. 
as her favor she had from Naruto for managing a senzu bean into a capsule, Naruto was her personal guinea pig for this new technology. She would later advance this technology once she recorded results from Naruto using the training room. Once Naruto and Gohin had caught up to Krillin and Bulma on the landing board, they began saying their goodbyes to their friends. Bye guys. We'll be back and protect the earth. Said Naruto with a smile on his face. Rashi, Tien, Yamcha, Kai Kai, Chiatsu, Jik Mam, Ox King, and Oolong all waved goodbye to the group traveling to Namek. Once the landing board had elevated and snapped shut, everybody began walking around the ship. Bulma walked straight towards the steering console and began starting the ship. Krillin pulled out a sack full of senzu beans and tied it to the sash around the waist of his guy. While everyone else was organizing their luggage, nobody expected to hear a voice. Hello everyone. Everybody, except Bulma, turned to see Piccolo sitting down meditating. Mr. Piccolo, you're here. Said Gohin happily. Wait, when did Piccolo get on board? Asked Krillin. He arrived yesterday and told me he was going to join us. I wasn't going to stop him, especially since he knew the code word somehow, so now he's with us. Either way, we now have more manpower. Said Bulma as she tinkered with the console. Alright everyone, strap in, began Bulma. We're about to launch off straight into space. Everyone strapped into their own seats, except Piccolo who stayed in his meditating position. Okay. Let's travel to Namek. Shouted Bulma cheerfully. With a great lurch forward, the spaceship launched into the atmosphere of Earth. Within seconds, they were already out of their solar system. They were ready to get their wish and land on Namek. Their adventure would hold a large amount of uncertainty, but the entire group held smiles with a confident attitude. Namek would soon be a hotspot for universe-changing events. The end. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.